<laughs> anyway, welcome back to Miss. Last time, we went through four days of travel that I thought was gonna get skipped over. This time, we're doing the thing that I actually that. wanted to do in last time. <laughs> A massive Ooh. orgy? Yeah, let's what? start. Yeah. Let's start the session oh. by bullying our players. Thanks, Cat. Oh, that's my and favorite pastime. Ding dong. Get All some right. thicker skin. Continuing. Oh. Um. My skin is. So thin we're on so... day five of travel. This is the first day without Ava. <laughs> How do you have about two or three days travel until you hit the main site where the Aetherbound exists? Sounds like we're going to a wildlife preserve. <laughs> uh, kind of. They are a semi-nomadic, very much living off the land people. And they move with the seasons, so it's not super hard to find them, but since it's... We're approaching the middle of autumn, so they should be where they should yeah. be. Look, guys. Look, it's a child kid. It's him. Yeah. He's a girl. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. I love him. He's Trans so Celsus. He's a pretty guy. Just for the day of travel, we can say you guys go through a day of travel. Nothing interesting. More fields. Some trees. Maybe a deer. Oh, dear. Kill the deer. Maybe, maybe if I... No kill deer. It's just oh, a deer. deer. Vari spots a hawk or two. Or you, you see those mm. are... You see those <laughs> hawks as well. Mm. Damn birds. I think they've been... I think they've been trailing us. Are those hawks or crows? Hawks just do that, Vari. They're looking for the dead. Alright. <clears throat> this is... A decent time. I'm simply going to rip the band-aid off. Celsus. Oh, what? Take... Oh shit, he's doing the thing. Hey! Shut up, he's doing the thing. Going to rip what off? Celsus. It's an expression. Never heard such a word before. What does it mean? <laughs> I'm not actually bandage. sure. I've just heard the expression. It's a different Why word not... for bandage. Why not just say bandage? I don't know, honestly. Anyway. I don't know why they changed it for the expression. It's very odd. <laughs> <laughs> Celsus takes out his spell book and uh, flips through a few pages. Hmm. All right, Alexandria, you can come out. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Every Hello. Hmm. Everyone, this is Alexandria. Pleasure meet making your acquaintance. I'm a yeah, book. I'm good. No one's freaking out. Didn't uh, take you as the type of person for that type of a. Um... No, what do you do, you Celsus? Hi, Alexandra. <laughs> I'm Rain. Are you implying something, Howard? A light blank stare looks at Celsus. I'm attempting humor. I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny too. Ah, oh, I see. To imply that you would ever have a hooker seems ridiculous and preposterous. So I put it out there to be ridiculous and preposterous. <laughs> I see. <laughs> the two humorless characters. <laughs> well, guys, that's yeah, insane. Hello, hello oh. Alexandria. I'm Rain. What else is there to say? I'm a book. Yes, she is like my spell book. Person. How are you doing that projection of yourself? I was a person. I am a person. But also I'm a book. You're a person book. Which were you first? Person or a book? Person. Which came first, the book or the nerd? It's an age-old question. So, so, so are you turning people into books? Don't be ridiculous. Just me. Just her. Why? Because I'm his most faithful servant. Essentially, yes. Badass. Most faithful implies you have more servants, is that true? He used to. I have in the past. Celsus, your girlfriend is pretty. <laughs> Alexandria, will be, Alexandria will go bright red. <laughs> I'm not his girlfriend, I'm his protector. Same difference. She says hooker. <laughs> There's a difference between a hooker and a girlfriend, right? I mean... Please do not start introducing the child to these terms. 
Uh, Does she not already know these terms? I mean, I live... My my father was a... Rain just kind of looks like uh, looks, looks uncomfortable for just a, a little, uh, just a slight moment, and it just kind of goes quiet. Yes, well, <laughs> perhaps her father was a hooker. What is with you and hookers today? I find the word particularly comfortable to roll off the tongue. It sounds nice for some reason. Hooker. Hooker. Why hooker. don't you be a hooker? hooker. Hooker. Yo, the only hooker I want to get know is the fishing type of hooker, you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> 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 Fucking cast some rod out there, hell yeah! I just love how I know it's just going, hooker, hooker, hooker! <laughs> hooker, hooker, hooker. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Fucking skull. Uh, this is Alexandria. She will be traveling with us more physically now. Now that we've figured out how to do that effectively. I've always been here. Yeah, but you were just in the bag. I was just in the bag. Well, well now, I was now actually you've... in the book. In now the you have graduated from being in the bag. Why did you have your girlfriend in a bag? That's weird. You're quite no, she's still going to be in the bag most of the time. I like the bag. There's nothing wrong with liking the bag. Alexandria, if you don't mind... Get yourself some fresh air once in a while. How about that? It's good for you. Are you more akin to a living story or a person that just simply changed form? Because I'm rather curious. Oh? Uh, maybe I should rephrase this. Um... Do you find your current state freeing? In a way. It allows me to be closer to Celsus, sir. And that brings you happiness? Yes. Hmm. I would do anything for him. And you're not his girlfriend, how? Amy, I love that you have chosen this to be the one thing that Rain fixates on. <laughs> she's a child! She has a one-track mind! Oh yeah, Caravan it's hand I Rain it. another bowl of soup to try to get her to eat and stop talking. The dynamic between me and my master is none other than purely platonic. And also because I am bound to him by oath. Right, so if you were in like a relationship through that, that would, that would just be weird. Uh, I'm about still not following thinking about it. Why you have a servant? Are you some type of higher authority, Celsius? In a way, yes. Surprised you didn't lead with such a thing, unless it's something you do not wish to discuss. Not currently. Hmm. Eh, you know, that's... I just chalked it up fine. to being a wizard thing. Most wizards tend to get people to do more of the heavy lifting type thing. That's why I'm You're here anyway. You're the second person who wants to keep his identity and position of power hidden in this group, and I find that fascinating. Because there are only two people I've ever met with positions of power who don't like speaking about their positions of power. And they're right here in front of me. That's curious. I suspect my reason is similar to Oriet's. Is someone trying to kill you? In a way. Are they? How many people? He pulls out her sword. Alexandria. Okay. <laughs> well, listen. We appreciate your initiative here, Alexandria, but we should probably actually take a little peek around just in case, you know. You never know. Hmm. Oh, here. Mm. Alexandria can look. You know... Yep. The roads have been pretty clear, save those birds up there. Just birds, why are you, like... Birds are normal, Valerian. Yeah. Still, they can't be trusted, though. We're not far out from where the Aetherbound live. Theoretically, their land is going to be 
propagated by multiple living creatures, otherwise living off the land would be quite difficult. I like you actually bring up an interesting point there. Like these these Aetherbound folk are like druidic in nature, right? From what I've gathered from the Ion um, Church back in Saith, yes. Do you think any of them could, like, I don't know, turn into birds? I find that quite reasonable, yes. Uh, I'm gonna cast Thaumaturgy to yell at the hawks. The hawks that have flown off at this point? True. Have they flown off? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if they were still there or not. In the case, never mind. Hey, I, was just, I was just going to yell at them to uh -oh. fuck off. <laughs> Don't, yeah. Don't no, Vari, no, birds. we're trying to make friends with them, no! <laughs> Don't hunters well, use birds sometimes? Mm, yeah, some yes. rangers have companions that can scout ahead for them from the air. I would consider the hawks slightly suspicious were we going into a hostile environment. However, the Ion Priest has, for the most part, regaled that they are quite neutral-leaning friendly. Well... If this is the area that they choose to, you know, make their camp, I'd be a little bit cautious, too. We are awfully close to the mire, you have to consider. I also do believe that our band is a rather suspicious one to begin with. They just kind of gaze around at all the different, like, bright and colorful people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you people crazy or something. We're not exactly normal peasants, nor are we peddlers. Frankly, I would probably assume that we're some sort of bounty hunter, should I see from the sky. We are not solicitors. Hmm. Pretty sure that's what we're doing. Soliciting? I simply wish to talk to them. That is all. I'm thinking am I the wrong way to find soliciting anyway. If it would appease it's, you it's, all, it's I can, word. of course, ride on ahead. Huh? No, we don't want you to do that, Halite. Well, should I have been led astray by the Ion Priest, which I find unlikely. Ion is of knowledge, not mm. of deceit. We should be safe. Well, with all due respect, Halite, I can't just take the word of some priest I've never met in my whole entire life. Mm. I'd like to make sure that we're taking measures just to be as safe as possible. Fair After enough. all, there isn't any evidence disputing that we are, in fact, not in danger. Or are in danger, Erevan. To begin with, I am going off the assumption that the Aetherbound are even here. In which case, well, if they aren't, we can keep going. After Shoot, all, have we just been not going a like a lead. <laughs> have we just been going in like a big circle this whole time? Like, seriously, though. Hey, look, it's no. left it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have not, Vari. Hey, we're back home. Permanent home, Lemstead. <laughs> oh my god. Murderous. Anyway. <laughs> the Aetherbound are merely a small stop on the way to the swamp. Which is ultimately the goals of... Should I refer to you as Celsus still? Is that what you would prefer? Yes. Yes. And Celsus an idiot. Again, very fascinating that the two with noble ties that are hiding them both want to go to the swamp. Do you suppose there's some sort of dramatic irony here? Transmutation wizard. Transmutation wizard. Yes. And in any mm. case. The goal's a line. Mayhaps if the Etherbound cannot help me, the transmutation wizard could. So, I'm simply trying things at this point. It is rather... I wouldn't say dissatisfactory, but disappointing having no strong leads. Well, let's just oh, hope Alexander for the best. leans over to you Celsus know? and whispers very loudly, What are they all looking for? It depends. <laughs> is this, is this Alexandria eats books time, Wesley? Yes, yes it is. Oh my god. <laughs> Eats books. Wait, actually? <laughs> actually? Yes. 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 Her's just gonna, like, kind of just rub her temples a little bit and be like... <laughs> so, am I meant to gather that you were going to eat my memories? Eat them? 
Yeah, because I'm, I'm still I'm still wondering when you're gonna bring up that part, Alexandria. Simple, we weren't. L listen, listen. Because if you weren't, I I definitely was, and that's not a great look for you guys. So if you want to bite the bullet and kind of like go through that whole deal, kind of like right now, I um you know appreciate not having to kind of like drag you guys for that one. A simple way to describe it is that she can read people's memories. Uh -huh. And sometimes I can become them. Listen. Huh? Any memories, by them. chance? So, so you eat books and read memories? And sometimes I eat the dead. Eh? I mean, we all do. <laughs> we, we all literally do that. Is your knowledge limited to that of which the target can remember, or are you able to uncover me memories that maybe even the person themselves does not maintain? I haven't tried too much. I don't believe we've ever had adequate data in that exact topic. Well, it just kind of looks down at idiot. Might be helpful if you're interested. I'm happy to help. She is very. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's a route I've never considered myself, but I wonder if there's a memory from my childhood that could help me. Um. Maybe it's not willing. I would be willing to at least see what happens. I'm not sure if you if you want that Hellbite, because I'm I'm gonna be I'm just gonna I hate to drag you guys like this, but I'm pretty sure the exact term of phrase that she used with me was steal my memories. Yeah, I steal a copy. Uh huh. Like a library. I don't have any issue with that. You will still have them afterwards. It's simply that she will also. Yeah, and how and how am I meant how am I meant to confirm that self system? I can Don't confirm it. That anyone would use my memories against me, or that anyone would really wish to. So I see no problem in it. Do you wanna copy my memories? She looks at Celsius. Solstice nods. If you want me to. Rain uh, will prance over. Kind of looks at Alexandria expectantly. Um, okay. So, the best way to do this. Okay, so. Can I have. Can I have the letter opener? He takes a letter opener out of the spine of the book and hands it to her. Uh, uh, okay, okay, hang on. <laughs> Letter opener. Yeah, but why though? I can't. It's going to hurt. I'm going to prick you. Listen, it's she easier. didn't need to prick. She didn't need to prick me. I don't know why. I don't know why this is suddenly like Would part you like of the deal. Would you like me to do it to multiple people, or just one person? Because for me to do it ah. without hitting you, or causing some sort of physical damage, is taxing. You little snake. Ervon, if you're not going to step in, I am, because this is getting insane. Here, if you people must, here, Vari. I think introductions are good enough for tonight. I don't think we need to get into, you know, drawing blood from people and reading into their memories. Vari, I think you should allow people to take their own choices into their own hands. Just let you see their memories that doesn't steal them, correct? No one's forcing you to do this. I read them. And copy them. I'm sitting back down here. Strange choice. All right, go ahead. Yep. You are turning your mind into a book for a moment, is what I assume, yes? It's no different from recounting a story from your mouth. It will vaguely hurt. I can take a prick. It'll just be like a little headache. <laughs> How I just bluntly says, she's lost a hand, I doubt it could be worse. <laughs> Rain poison highlight. Exactly. <laughs> I'm glad your hand got better. Thank you. That happens to me sometimes when I get hit really hard. I kind of disappear for a while. Oh no. 
I get better. So yes, if this if this form dies, it doesn't mean anything. No, still they still get hurt. I would suppose yes. It would be avoided at all costs. Do I feel pain in the typical sun Celsius, sir? Mm. If you used to be a human, wouldn't you know? Wouldn't you have that experience with you? I do, but also, just because I'm not nece just because I'm necessarily feeling pain doesn't mean it's not fake pain because I am hit, and a memory of pain is induced via being hit, and I'm not actually experiencing actual pain. I know that feeling very intrinsically. So I could be getting hit, but not actually feeling pain because I'm no longer a person. But because like I have a, person memories and I know like what a pain phantom feels pain like. Kind of thing. Yeah. You are feeling pain in order to or abide like by a, the possible reaction of not being able to feel pain once. There's like a there's like a phrase for this. It's like associative pain or something like that. Okay. Sympathy pain. Sympathy no, pain. That's yeah, when there you go. Someone else gets hit, isn't it? I think it can refer to also yourself if you're <clears> like. I saw a YouTube video about this once. Sympathetic pain. Wait, what? Talking shut up! Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh. Okay, okay, okay. She takes the letter opener and just like pricks Vari's, or not Vari, Rain's finger. Alexandria drains her memories. For, until you take a next long rest, you subtract 1d4 from all ability checks or attack rolls. What was she thinking about? That Alexandria is really pretty. <laughs> Alexandria, like, kind of mulls over the information for a second. Uh, her eyes kind of moving like she's reading a book. Okay. And then she just, like, looks down at Rain, her eyes back in focus. You think I'm pretty? Yeah, <laughs> you're really pretty. She blushes. You. Oh, cat. <laughs> yep. If there was like a role I could do as Vari to try to gauge if there's like memory consumption magics going on here, what would that be? Would that be Arcana? Insight. Our insight? I, I mean, whichever higher, whichever's higher. Arcana or uh, I, insight. I got a minus one in Arcana, plus seven to insight. <laughs> oh, no. Consumption feels like the wrong word. And you can't place why, but it Alexandria doesn't look like she's consuming anything. Okay, maybe maybe I was assuming a little bit after watching her just eat a book. They're tasty. But I'm still I'm knowledge. still not I'm still not cool with all this poking around in people's brains kind of thing. I hope you understand, Celsius, uh, given like you know, current circumstances that this is kind of like, eh, this is kind of, eh, you know? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> sure. Alexandria would just hand salt back the, the little, uh... Oh, wait. Hold on. She takes it back. How do you want me to? Um, yes, I wouldn't be against seeing if you could procure anything else from my mind. Just fucking look at the Maria. You're fucking infatuated with her. I might have to prick you a couple times to get deeper memories. I just kind of hop down. Hmm, that's quite all right. Memories are stored things. in the blood. They're not. They're not stored in the blood. No. I'm not sorry. <laughs> How can you hear me? <laughs> I can read lips. Damn it! That's oh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> She can't do many things well, but one thing she can do well is read. Um, yeah, so Halle will jump down and just, like, offer. He'd prick Halle once. Oh, okay. I see why these are fuzzy. It's almost like they're, like, overlaid on top of another memory? They're overlaid? Yeah, I've never seen this before. But like, it's like, there's two sets of memories. One is just on the bottom, and like, obscuring the good view of the top memories. Alexis, have you ever seen this? It's peculiar. I don't believe so. 
It's really interesting. She kind of like licks her lips a little bit. It tastes sour. <laughs> Do you know which is which, Bitchens? Um, well, I can't see you. I can only see from you. Right. Well, describe them. Maybe I could tell you. Um, one of them is very cold and almost like... What's the opposite of, like, alone? It feels very not alone. But warm. But also very cold, like you are cold. And you're yes, surrounded by yes. people who make you feel warm. I grew up in the mountains in the north. It was quite always cold. Um, that makes sense. That sounds so. relatively accurate. Did you? Oh. Despite the warm feeling? I don't quite remember that, but I might be mistaken. Well, that it's hard to d d separate them. Yes. That... So the warm feeling could be from something else, but also, you seemed happy. Though I've, mm. from listening, I've never heard Celsus quite describe you as happy. Yes, I suppose I wouldn't describe myself as happy either. The other one had a rougher feel, like stone floors and hastily put together, like, rooms and kind of like the servants' quarters. Back home, sir. Stone floors? Yeah. Hmm. That does sound vaguely familiar, but I don't think I can place it. Hmm. That's all I can really, like, decipher. I'm not very good with explaining things. It's alright. You've given me insight onto something that I'd never even considered. The reason I can't remember isn't actually natural. Did something, like, magical happen to you as a kid? I don't know. Huh. I could ask my mentor, Alice, if you might know. That's my only explanation. Magic tends to warp and change things in weird ways. Yes. Thank you for this insight. Ah, yes, Alexandria. I could listen to you go on about your whole memory analysis all day long and not get bored. Who's got time for some stories? I like stories. Stories have a wonderful flavor. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of one right now that just doesn't start with once upon a time there was a group of travelers who all got their memories stolen. <laughs> Celsus puts That's just a uh, joke, Celsus. His, Celsus, his come on. Bari, you have a way of bringing down every single conversation. No, co it was a it. joke. <laughs> it was a dark joke, but I have a dark sense of humor, Erevan. It was a joke? <laughs> She's dark and twisted like that. Uh, what did Alexander just say? Uh, it was a joke? Yes. Oh. At least I got them hope so. I just thought you were think actually thinking of stories that started like that. People are peculiar. Why don't we tell actual tales? Yeah. I feel like that would be a, a perfect idea. way to I feel like my bring life's Alexandria a little, uh, into the knit. dull for this compared to you guys. Oh, come on. Like, who, who are you to judge that before you actually tell a story? Come on. Yes, Aravon, I don't suppose I know much about you at all. Yeah, what's life like from down there? <laughs> let's wait well, for Celsus I mean, to get I'm back. Just... Hang on, let's, let's, let's wait for him to get back. Celsus looks into the corner <laughs> next to the cart and the rock. Story that <laughs> wait, I what? <laughs> what? crosses his arms, <laughs> just keeps looking there. Can I do like a perception to notice that if he's doing this or not? Because I'd have a really... <laughs> Interesting time with that. Celsus, after a moment, just says, You need to work on your illusions. Mm. Oh, you noticed. Yes, I did. <laughs> I noticed Uria wasn't saying anything, and then I rolled a 26 investigation. Damn! <laughs> yep. There's a story that my mom used to tell me when I was little. And what's that? So there was a little girl who lived in the plains, 
and every day she would go out to play. In the middle of the field, there was a small hill with a tree on, on the top of it. So every day she would go out to the tree and she would play in, underneath the shade of the tree. And when she saw weeds, she would always pick the weeds around the tree and uh, generally take care of the area. One day, the little girl's village was attacked and a, a bad man tried to chase her. And so she ran to the tree. She, had th she thought that she wouldn't see the end of the day, but then the tree strangled the man and saved her. And she lived in the forest ever since. Trees coming to life. My mom used to say mm. it meant that if you take care, if you take care of people, they'll take care of you. That's a rather good story, Rin. Rin just smiles. Wonder what the likelihood of that was actually some sort of woven tree cast by a druid very long time ago. That'd be really cool. Well, hey, we're we're on route to some druids right now. Maybe you can bring that story up with them, Rain. Wait, you think I should? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I will. I'd like to meet a friendly tree. Where is that man? Sarsis, you coming back from behind the wagon? Alright. What are you doing here? I'm trying to not ruin the... vibe or whatever it's called over there. No, no one likes a mopey mm -hmm. dragonborn. Mm-hmm. Well, two things. One, I have a feeling that most, uh, that at least two of them would say that you should be there anyway. That's the first point. The second point is you've missed the introduction of, uh, of Alexandria. I, I heard most of what you guys were saying. I stayed within earshot a bit, so, I'm, you know, as long as you weren't too quiet, I could hear some stuff, and that Ex Alexandria person sounds pretty loud, boisterous, and tall, so, you know. You can meet her. You can meet her later. But, look, you can stay here and be sad <laughs> as much as you wish. But... That is not going to work in the long term. You're right, and I hate that, but... Mortals are an emotional thing. Yes, yes they are. Speaking of, do you even have anyone that you would say you love or, I don't know, a strong emotional connection to? There's one. If you weren't able to see them, you had to keep your existence hidden from them because you don't know if they still feel the same about you or that them knowing that you're still alive or exist, that might put them at jeopardy or something. What would you do? Would you still try to contact them or... Do something to let them know you're alive. Something. Anything. Well, I can't relate with the concept of them trying to... Or them feeling differently given who I'm talking about. But I will attempt to... <laughs> empathize. How important. Was looking at Celsus, and then his eyes kind of like do the little thing where the pupils dilate, and then just when they refocus, he's staring past Celsus as if lost in a distant memory. Just and they said yes. Hmm. And given your status, I doubt that it was simply arranged. Nope. I don't like that. Somebody else taught me that. Doing something arranged or not out of specific emotions or without a deeper meaning 
it's pointless and that they would never look my way. Celsus gives like a small little smirk and then just kind of mumbles, oh good, something I can relate to. The first one was a human. You'll spit fire. <laughs> well, I think a sign that you're still around would be much appreciated then. Just in case, will you keep an eye on me for a moment? So you don't chicken out, so to speak? That, and just in case, doing this alerts somebody. Hmm. All right. God, all right. <laughs> Starts playing the ocarinas to mask or doing the verbal components and whatnot for his sending spell. I'm alive. Not a day goes by that I don't think of you. I'm so sorry I haven't said anything until now. Be safe. You didn't see any weird sensors or any of that stuff again, did you? you don't need Vari having a conniption. I don't believe so, no. Great. How much longer is on that? Oh, that thing should be petering out any second now. After after listening to Rain Teller's story, Ari's just kind of like gonna whisper over to the illusion of Uriet, like, "Hey, I don't wanna, I don't wanna drag you away from like, you know, like story time, because I know how much that cheers you up and all when you're feeling sad. <laughs> but I have a bad feeling that something like Celsus, like he just snuck off somewhere, like <laughs> around the cart. For some reason, I have no idea where he ended up. I can't see anything right now. <laughs> so." We need to track him down because I have a bad feeling that he just learned something from those two. And something bad's going to happen, so I need you to come with me like, right now so we can find this guy. Or he just, like, I don't know where pulls out his ocarina and just starts playing music. Hang on, stop that. You got your plugs near or something. Can you hear me? She's going to, like, wave a hand from his face. Pari's just going to, like, turn over to Alexandria and just, like, her head's just going to snap over, like, What did you do to him? <laughs> Either things have progressed really bad, or you did something to his brain. What did you do? <laughs> I've had it up to here with people poking around in other people's brains, taking things out here and there wherever they please, Alexandria. I throw my spoon through Uriet. <laughs> Go through Uriet. You could have just poked him. <laughs> For the entire <laughs> okay, fine then. Maybe I maybe I jump to conclusions. Um, okay. <laughs> Celsus just kind of uh, says to Uriet, "Now can you come back? They're accusing Alexandria of <laughs> doing something to you." Uh, poor girl. Poor what, what what happened to him? How can we fix him? It's Why an illusion. Like this? Oh, <laughs> hang on. Yeah, I've run into these before. And by that moment, <laughs> like it just dissipates. Uh, just poof. Yeah, yeah. Good prank. Good prank. <laughs> What's going on now? Story time. Come on. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Nothing happened. You're good. Uh huh. Oh, could you pass me my spoon back? Uh, uh yeah. Hang on. I got that for you. Don't worry, buddy. <laughs> I dragged it through a little bit of dirt, but just lick that off. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're the uh, Alexandria person he was talking about? Yeah. You're a lot bigger than I thought you were. Is that bad? Nah. Just means you're, like, taller and whatnot. I mean, you're pretty tall. Yeah, being tall is awesome. And pretty. Yeah, you can like suplex people. It's great. You can also fly them up like I don't know, two hundred feet in the air, and then just drop them on their heads. Goddamn, hardcore. All right. I don't like bandits. What can I say? What does that have to do with being tall? That just sounds like a wing sort of conundrum. I mean, that's a type of tall. Maybe, maybe. Is flying up into the sky not indicative of height? Yeah, you actually bring up a good point there, Al. I, I guess that's kind of the ultimate tall. Yeah, exactly. Not being detained by the 
truly untethered by this ground we walk upon, this soil. Mm. That would be nice. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a seat right here so I can, you know, maybe I'm gonna participate in the short life for a little bit, you know? Yeah, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Hey, why don't why don't you guys over there take the load off as well, Celsus? You've been standing there like a Celsus. lecturer this whole time. Come on, take it easy, man. <laughs> Celsus takes out a blanket and puts it on the ground mm. and then I'll, sits down. I'll back up into the carriage. Oh Alexandria God, like yes. straightens out the blanket. <laughs> Speaking of preferring like being so tall. fancy, it's... I prefer being tall. It's, it's more comfortable. Um, it is. I mean, unless you want to be under the sand, that's good too. I, I just remember this whenever she said that. Uh, so I was gonna have my notes back. I forgot to get those back from you the other day. Oh yes, here you go. Alexandria had a look at them. You can ask her about it at some point. Uh, good, good. I, you know, more minds on this. Uh, people that you know have studied this kind of thing. Very helpful. Mm. Uh, uh, you got any stories? Alexandria, um, I got something that is probably, I don't know, funny. But you can't know it, haha. Yeah. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Because I'm not going to let you know it. She just smiles. I love a challenge. Wait, right, does anyone nice. know any mind-reading magic? Nope. Maybe I have a question for the group then, since no one else seems to be bobbing up with a story. I feel like it's a very simple question. It might get the brains moving. Four! No, Odiot, I highly doubt that's your answer. Damn. Five? Same Just vein. ask the question. <laughs> I wanted to know what each of your favorite things are. I suppose anyone can start. Okay, can I go? Okay, I could go first. Awesome. Yes. Uh, kinda, kinda in my current arc right now, so to speak, is kind of my loving god arc. <laughs> Second favorite thing, not having my brain scrambled. That's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> I could do that enough on my own. Thank you very much. They're thoroughly scrambled anyway. <laughs> but right now, yeah, my favorite thing is Squidge and how absolutely absolutely real it's been. Uh being able to, you know, be the be the one and only the strongest champion of a uh, of a deity. I think having that sort of connection isn't something that you well come across very often, more or less, you know. Fair enough. Mine is calm. I like mm. the calm before a storm. I like the peace of a quiet town. Mm. I can understand that. I have a lot of favorite things like freshly baked bread or a nice a warm blanket without too many holes in it. Or fresh fish or... Or Aravan! Um, to come over and give you a hug. I rustle Rain's hair. <laughs> oh, and the harvest when it's not too cold but not too hot. Yeah, our favorite things, you know, that's a lot of things, but you know, they're all pretty good. How about you, Rit? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know, anything, anything come to mind? It doesn't have to be your top favorite, favorite thing. It would just be something you like. Favorites do change for a lot of folks, I know. I... I'll get back to you on that. I sure. can't think of anything at the moment, sorry. No, that's good. Mm. Alexandria is deep in thought. Are you sure you don't have anything like in your journal? Like, How about you, maybe, like, maybe you wrote down like favorite you color, favorite season, favorite time of day, you know, etc., etc. Hmm. My favorite thing. Hmm. They just kind of close their eyes and like they would take a deep breath. Being at the tallest point, of a city, or of a tree in a forest. 
watching the approaching storms on the horizon, getting caught in a thunderstorm, oak billowing around, wind rushing past my hair, scent of rain in the sky, and a flash of light. It's unlike anything else in this world. Yeah, I think there's a lot that could be said about those things. Uh... I find that there's a lot you can learn from asking a person what their favorite thing is. Yeah, I think I can go a little deeper than that, though. Why do you suppose that that's your favorite thing? If you really, mm. you know, dug into it. Not literally, of course, but... Save for you really had the to... sensations. The smells, the sounds, the feelings. It's like a properly mixed drink. But if I had to define why I find that is my favorite above all else, I don't suppose I know. It is simply a feeling. For me, I guess I'd say it's the the peace of mind that uh, a connection to a, a god, a greater being, really brings me. I kind of can commune with him, and he can tell me where where to go, what to do, that sort of thing. You know, it's direction. a big world out there. Yep, it's a big world out there. It can get confusing, it can get lost sometimes, and kind of, you know, kind of knowing, knowing where to go, knowing what to do. Knowing if anything bad's going to happen or not. And mm. how to, I guess, prepare for that appropriately. But sometimes bad times are in, in, in inevitability in life. Such as fate. Mm hmm yeah, true that. Hmm. I don't suppose you would consider good times an inevitability as well. Oh. That's what I was trying to suggest with saying that bad times are as inevitable as anything else. Sometimes you gotta get through the bad times. Get to the good times. I believe there's a point at which all of this boils down to things simply happen. Ascribing it to fate or some other grand emotion seems a point of contention, I suppose. Some people are insistent that everything's predetermined. Others feel a greater purpose. Some find comfort in not having to worry about their actions swaying the ultimate course of things. Others find it positively frustrating to suggest such an idea. Well, where I'm kind of at with that whole thing is, yeah, I feel like there is a sort of a fate thing going on here. It's undeniable, like how like, you were describing it yourself, that we've got two figures among us with a, with a higher standing that have been hiding it from us, and lo and behold, they're both after the same person. Doesn't that kind of sound like fate stringing those two together, so to speak? Hmm. The right ideas, I suppose, yes. So I think there is some fate on some level. I've witnessed it myself. How it kind of draws people together. How it entangles those who try to affect it. And I think you can affect it to a certain degree. Would you say if I were to roll two six-sided bones at this moment and acquire two ones, that that would be an act of fate? Or just simple light physics? I mean, I think that'd be a that'd be a lucky guess. Does the magnitude of the event not matter in this situation? For example, rolling two ones on a pair of six-sided bones is unlikely, yes, but it's bound to happen eventually. And likewise, two noble types hiding their identities is unlikely to happen in the same party, but. It's also bound to happen eventually. So is it really fate? I mean, from like the way you put it, yeah. I think so still, yeah. Hmm. I still have yet to decide. 
I think you'll see some more evidence pop up here and there, given the time. Damn though, existence is wild. Hey, you wanna tell us why you like why you like your cool things? No. Okay, awesome. <laughs> great chat, great chat, gang. You know what? That's that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I will keep mine short. I like solitude. Mm. I like not having to worry about it. Short enough? I understand. For a guy who has a secret friend, solitude wasn't one that I was expecting from you, Celsus. That's interesting. Alexandria isn't a person. She does not. <laughs> I'm not a person. Oh I'm my welcome. god. Alexandria seems far too pleasant to be considered a person. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so wait. Would you give birth to little baby books then? I don't think I can give birth. And how with that attitude you can? If he wrote a book, would it constitute as giving birth? Or is that simply something else? Celsus, can I have children? I don't believe we've tested <laughs> 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 Also, oh, well, that then, cat you. Get <laughs> so much the little kid asking so the mom. So innocent! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there is my Okay, but... Very good. Consider what you're doing here. Not... <laughs> Not with Celsus, he'll, he'll, he'll lose his magic. Wait, she's asking you if she can have a kid. <laughs> Are you sure you two aren't dating? <laughs> and like that, my work of chaos is done for the night. Mm, Good the night, everybody. First, like a sealed book. Which one of you is the bookmark in the relationship? Oh, my. The bookmark is actually, like, That's my it. skirt. Oh, fascinating. I did notice a very unusual style of pleating. Is yeah. your entire she, like fans out of her from... skirt layers. See, I've got pages. That is very interesting. Celsus kind of takes the book out of the bag again and says, Yes, I suppose this is important given she's going to be helping. Her equipment equipment is he holds up the book things I put on the book. He takes the letter opener out of the spine of the book. This is her sword. Taps the thing on the spine. This is her shield. And then taps the corners that are plated with something. These are her chainmail. And the rest of her armor. If I gave you a small file of one of my concoctions, could you take potions into battle? Given enough preparation, theoretically. Do I have your permission to work on such an armament? Sure. At least I really are sorry excited. Fascinating. This will be a task to put my mind on when there's nothing else to do. Thank you for this opportunity. Celsus nods. <laughs> yeah, leave you me. You guys want to know my favorite things? Yes. Hey, I have a guess on what one of your favorite things is. Two of your yeah. favorite things, actually. Oh, two. Yeah. I feel like one is obvious. It's got to be Celsius. He blushes, but nods. Second thing. I feel like you might be a sucker for a really good book. I do like books. See, it depends on the kind of book. Mm -hmm. What I do they taste say, like anyway? I like stories. They all have different kinds of flavors. Um... Yeah, I can also taste, like, anything Celsus puts in the book, I can taste sometimes. Uh, so if he writes a fire spell, it gets, it's very spicy and warm. And cold spells are cold and kind of make my teeth chatter. Um, electricity is all buzzy and makes my arms feel weird. Um, but I really like fairy tales. They're sweet. They are very much. My other favorite thing is tea. Tea, you say? Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
I don't drink it, but I like making it. I used to drink it all the time with my master. I suppose you could say tea is up there for me as well. My mentor in the mountains showed me how to brew tea, and it's been a boon ever since. Whenever there's only water and leaves available, many people would resign themselves to simply drinking water. There are so many flavors hidden in the grasses. Lemongrass, for example. Excellently sour. Uh, I'm sorry, Alan. When you said there's many little flavors hiding in the grasses, I was just thinking about crickets. <laughs> you know, a Western country likes to practice using insects in their teas. The, yeah, they Dried and hollowed cockroaches have been Yo, used they as brew a those little guys? Mix. And they yes. put them in, like, boiling water? Oh, wow, wow that's... <laughs> that's hardcore. I have also heard that some of the northern dragons Enjoy a concoction of ground up box elder beetles. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's something else to use in your guys. It is not suitable mm. for my taste, however. That's something else to use in, in, in your fib, your your big lie. Nah, I mean, I shouldn't put it like that. Uh, I don't really need to do terribly much to, you know, bring out a fib. I just need to hide the little tails. You know, little is another, not really. Uh, hide the tail, just be careful with some of the things I say. Uh, pretend that I can't do a breath, because, you know, oh man, I have a weird deformity that got rid of my, my breath sack, or it's so Idiot, small do you that... wish to eat bugs? <sighs> I mean, well, I'm... need some bugs right now? <laughs> not really, not the ones here. The ones I'm back where I'm from were... some box elders. Eh. Hang on, I think I saw some flies like buzzing around no, uh, my box like... face. The bugs I'm used to are a lot bigger. Also, they taste like chicken more than anything. These tiny ones are. Well, that's for eating the flesh of an insect, I'd imagine. Eh. I speak about using the carcass as a brewing material. Well, I mean, extracting I've had... flavors from the chitin. I mean, yeah, but you could just make a cup out of them if they're big enough. Hmm. Could you extract flavor from a cup made of a beetle carcass? Yes. Is this something common from where you're from? Also, yes. Huh. I would very much like to try that someday. I don't get why, like, some people really, really get grossed out by eating bugs. It's not a big deal. Like, I've, I've been around. I've seen, like, by the sea, there's big bugs that people drag out of the ocean, crack them open. They're eating those suckers all the damn time. Yeah, that makes sense, probably. Never seen a sea bug. Water bugs. Fascinating. Crustaceans. Yeah, you know? Oh, In a moment in crap. the safe, I think I saw one such shop selling something called a lobster. Wait, aren't crustaceans not bug celsius? They're close enough. Bugs. Technically not, but yes. Who cares? They kind of they kind of look like bugs, and they got the whole bug armor. Eh. They are the closest. They got bug eyes, bug faces. That's a bug. Eh, you ain't tried a big enough bug. At least you're not stuck in a bug spot, you idiot. I mean, to be fair, this body is essentially an insect to my original form. No, I would come just on. Have to step on. You got. Be, be, be a little kind to yourself. How, how, how about that for a change? You know, I'm, I'm being, like, literal on this one, Vard. I could, in my original form, take a step wrong if I'm not paid attention and accidentally crush this body. <laughs> I had to be very careful if there well, were you very you considered small you've been given an opportunity to demonstrate <laughs> some form of humility? That's how I have to and act then, while I'm around Erevan, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh my goodness, Vari. The point has been completely missed yet again. <laughs> also, no, I, mean, I hear what you're saying. It has definitely given me a different view on the world. Though, I already was, at least from what I can remember in the book and my notes, not a terrible person. But getting another look 
It definitely helps reignite the sort of fire to keep on living, that's for sure. It's like you're being given a second life. I know oh, very much like my other life back. I know, I'm simply trying to look on the positive side. Do not get me wrong, I don't wish to suggest that this is preferable. Hey, Alexandra, do you want to eat a bug? I know, I know, like, no. you don't really do people food all that much, but you know what? Why not try it? You might like it. Come on. I don't think that's a good idea. Farris going to go, like, look for a cricket, like, catch, catch. you want me to do a quick survival? Sure. Catch a cricket. I'm getting owned. You're getting owned by the crickets. I'm getting owned by the crickets. Come on. What is the Come cricket roll? You're getting owned by the crickets. They're too fast. She like, <laughs> does a thing like where she like does get it, but like she opens her hands to check to see if it's there and it jumps out. Yep. <laughs> Damn it. Alright, <laughs> least favorite things, crickets. I give up. <laughs> uh... Let me explain why my least favorite thing is a cricket. Little, jumpy, scampering little critters. I'm just trying to relax and one, you know, jumps. It's distracting. You're the one trying to interrupt their life to eat them. Yeah, I don't want to eat them. I want Alexandria to eat them. There's a difference. No. Alexandria is not going to eat a cricket. <laughs> she will eat a cricket by the end of the night, Celsus. So help me God. I mean... No. Why don't you ask your God Why are you fighting me on this so much, you two? Because I Come can on. just do this. Oops, out of existence. Uh, okay. Celsus, if you were to stick a cricket within the pages, would she come back out with a large cricket steed? That's a good idea. Can you write her into liking crickets for me? That's I'm not, not my suggestion. I'm not going to rewrite Alexandra. Why not give her a cricket? As a friend. That would take a great deal of time, a great deal of effort, and it would have to Okay, be but how about the rewriting thing to, like, eating crickets? Vari and I are saying two completely separate things. You have permission to ignore Vari. Excuse me, I'm trying to get a separate answer for a separate things highlight, so how about you back the fuck off, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine- I can't help but imagine when Vari says bitch, doing like the- the like, neck turn bitch. thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> While, in theory, I could rewrite parts of Alexandria, I'm not going to, but even if I- to it, rewriting her to eat things that she cannot eat is one of the few things that I cannot do. Really? Yes. Is that so? Yes. But you said that there's other things that you can do. Would they take as much time as the little cricket steed, or are there like little things? It would take about as much little time. Little quips, maybe. Okay, listen. I know she could probably hear me in there, but I'm just trying to find ways to get back at her for, you know, trying to eat my memories. She can hear you. Okay, yes. cool. I wanted her to know that. I'm glad that you got to me before doing that, because I would have found absolutely nothing. Is anyone actually coming to get us from your side of the equation, Salsus? No. No, they aren't. Okay, well, you know what? Celsus looks around to around behind him. No, they're not. And you're not paranoid, Celsus. No, not at all. Really? Hmm. Not particularly. Listen, if you're wondering why like, I'm so uptight and like concerned about everything going on, it's because I have to fight invisible specters all the goddamn time. It's just part of being like a priest. I'm merely saying that usually people don't hide who they are for no reason. It would do us all good to be on the same page. <sighs> I will tell you <clears throat> what I'm willing to tell you. And what I'm willing to tell is that because I'm traveling with you, I am informing you about Alexandria, 
letting letting aspects of my past be known but I would far prefer to not be linked to that currently to us or your past my past right now I am nothing more but an adventurer he does air quotes an adventurer <laughs> Hence why, while I have the ability to make this a more lavish experience, I'm not. And for the record, just because I know someone, Celsus looks at Vari, would probably try to kill me in my sleep if I did not let this part be known at least, I am being watched. Yeah, we probably figured that. Mm. Isn't that the thing, Celsius, though? Like, as much as you try to run from your past, like, trust me, I know about this kind of thing, always comes in circles around, come, it comes back to get you in ways that you might not expect, so if you feel like you're in danger at all, just know that you're safe with, oh, like, letting worry. us know. Don't worry, I plan to come back to it. <laughs> Believe me, I plan to come back to it. Hey, yo. If I were a normal person, nice. I would feel rather unsafe in this situation, but my safety is not of my Alexander, concern. Alexandria yeah. pops out right behind Celsus. Are you, are you being, are you being spooky again? God, the ghost, <laughs> the ghost of his past, it surrounds him. I gotta fight it off at all times. <laughs> Vari like does little punches at Alexandria. Alexandria draws her sword. Uh, okay, whoa, whoa, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I'm not using my weapons, why should you? You're you not? never use your weapons, <laughs> Oh, God, she's got me on read. She uses the sword. Okay, you know what? Too sure. Luckily, I know for a fact that the people watching me simply want to watch me at this point. Is it... Folks from the reserve? Are they like. No. Trying to keep. Okay. Why are they watching you? If I had to guess, some kind of sick pleasure. Watching you struggle? Something akin to that. Got a bunch of little, little, little freaks drilling you, huh? Are you performing a part of a pet, Sasus? I suppose one could call it <laughs> Do they not believe you can handle yourself? <laughs> no, I don't believe they do. I believe that actually changes my perspective. And how Light's smile goes up, like, just very slightly. I rather enjoy proving people wrong. Do I? He really does. Yes, thank you, Alexandria. I won't push you any further. Alexandria. I appreciate Alexandria. You. What, Fari? I'm getting the cricket. <laughs> you get the cricket, you get my sword. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. You know what? So I can square up. Let's go. I'm going to get that cricket, and I'm going to teach you how good they are eating those little guys like popcorn. You'll never go back. <laughs> Hey, Aravan, Vari's about to die, aren't they? <laughs> oh my god! Honestly, almost every time they open their mouth, I think that thought. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Sleep. You wanna, you wanna grab a seat and watch? Nah, I probably should be heading to bed. I'm gonna do my little prayers and go to bed. You wanna join me? Sorry nobody uh, wanted to listen to your story, by the way. I want, eh, I want it's to... fine, I'll tell it a different time. You know what? Cool. It's really not interesting. One... I want to watch Alexandria fight. I'm not going to actually hit her unless she comes at me with a... You almost <laughs> sweared. You almost sweared there, didn't you? Do you not like swearing? Can't say curse words around your boss? He's not my boss. He's your master. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, he's your boss. No. Above, just call him your boyfriend already. 
<laughs> He's not my boyfriend. Is so Listen, a woman? we might be day one, Alexander. We might be fighting over the whole cricket debacle, but sooner or later, I will be marrying you too. You don't have a choice. This has been arranged from day one. I hope you understand. It's just not fair in this world. Come here, you little she bastard. She is a priest. She could oh, leave Aravon, get him. that, I suppose. Celsus has the exact look in his <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, let's Alexandria is blushing at the thought of her and Celsus getting married, and she is, like, just staring off into space. Everybody, catch the cricket, little man! You're closer to him! I'm starting to rather enjoy this poking fun game you all play. I think I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> I'm going back in the book. <laughs> 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 Damn it! Uh, oh, I got away again. I hate the Mario vs. Cricket! <laughs> Top 10 out of my battle. Oh, shit. Are you ready Wait, to go to bed? Nice. Yeah, let's go to bed. bed. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> keep <laughs> going. I need an hour before, Alexandria. Before you all go to bed. Though. Before you all go to bed. Um, well, specifically, how light and rain. We need to have another ladies' conference. I'm sorry, but I gotta throttle you two over something. If you try, I'll cut you. How about you two? Come on. What? Touch me and I'll touch me and I'll stab you. How about uh, you want to go like um, maybe over here for a minute? I need help like catching more crickets for something. I Do you, you want two... to try your? Because you two, you know, I like you were like them. foragers, your 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 outdoors peoples who might like, help me catch some like, crickets. I like so. catching crickets. I can catch. Can I just crickets. reach down and grab a cricket? You roll me dex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, stop. Cool. Hey, All I just hey. snaps down, grabs a cricket without even looking down, and just holds it up, wriggling in between my thumb and like index finger. Hey, hey, You're cat. good, Halite, but we need more. Hey, 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 cat. Can I try to catch a cricket, but like do the thing that cats do, where they like get down low and like shake their butt? Yeah, and sure. Jump. You can uh, roll me dex as well. We need more than just that, Alwyn. Come on. You almost can get, get, get some much closer sleep to the so bar. I can speak to the Aetherbound tomorrow. It's already far too late. Let's speak on this matter tomorrow, Vari. Mmm. No, we speak on this right now, right over there. Where there are more crickets I saw hopping about. Unless you explain yourself, I'm going to do no such thing. This way, how light, how light remember our conversation? We're having a ladies' meeting. <laughs> and catching crickets. We're having a ladies' meeting, and Erevan. Erevan's not included. Erevan, go get some rest, buddy. Oh. Uh, how light's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's just that easy, huh? <laughs> Erevan <laughs> defeated. <laughs> Uh, I'm always going to give Erevan the look of like, yeah, she'll watch out for Raid. <laughs> Alright, um, even though the distance doesn't quite show it, Var is going to be taking you a fair distance away from the camp. Makes sense. Just going to turn it, like, spin around in place once she's, like, far away and not just hands over her face and she's just going to, you two are so dumb. I cannot believe what I just saw back there. Okay, so... I know I wanted to continue our meetings together over the whole uh, situation where we're trying to figure out what's going on with Celsius, but I don't think did that we not just anymore. figure out what is going on with Celsius? I believe you and... did straight up. Yeah, you I were think there's more. Worried about I think that's... asking him. I think my method worked perfectly fine. Well, we still can confirm that there's much, much more going on that we don't know, that he might not want us to know, that he obviously doesn't want us to know. And you, and you, Vari, both I don't think it takes a genius to figure minds. out that he's some sort of royal with some sort of he royal type Alexandria. of court or noble or you just let higher Alexandria. up in some other city. Read your and he minds. has some brother or sister, or possibly some yeah. type of person hold up, in his hold life. Hold up, Alight. This is not, I'm not here to talk about competent. him. It's time to talk about you. Then you've and entirely you. missed the point of my investigation. I think I succeeded quite well. 
I didn't drag you out here to hear your point, Hal Light. You're out here to listen to me before I start to get a little cranky. You're already cranky, Varu. Varu, you wake up in the morning and are just cranky naturally. Cranky is your natural state of being. If you're asking whether or not I trust Celsus, No, that's not what I'm asking. No. Stop, 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 both of you. <laughs> no more meetings. No more trying to figure all that out. I don't want your help anymore because you two just made the biggest fucking blunder on Earth and I don't think you even realize it. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. You know what? <laughs> you don't need to hear the reasons. I'm sure you could probably assume. Seeming like you're good at the whole deduction thing, but maybe not quick enough on the draw. It's some sort of perceived paranoia that eventually you let go of, yes. You just got your minds read. What were we talking about not a few nights hence? About specifically not letting Celsus in on the fact that we're trying to look into him. I work off of a hierarchy of importance, Fari. Celsus's investigation is below my own personal investigation. Thus, knowing more about my past is more important than Celsus not knowing about my past. This choice only affects me and does not affect you. Thus, no mistake was made. If you're that concerned for my safety, then I suggest you stop. I don't think it's your safety. I think I'm just worried about him wandering off. Then maybe he will wander off. Maybe that is what he wishes to do. To be lost I don't think and it never was found. What he wished. I don't think it's what, it's what he wished to do initially, maybe, but... You know, now that he knows everything that we were trying to do, now... Maybe he just might. Solitude with his... Hand-servant slash companion slash... Well, Rain seems to be insistent that she's some sort of love interest. I can see I like... I want to ask you... one-sided, maybe. I want to ask you a hypothetical scenario. Yes? Okay, so you get what that means, right? You just yes. use your imagination, picture that you're Fari. in the situation that I'm describing. Okay, cool. Fari, ask me your scenario. Okay, <laughs> say you... You told me that there are okay so you have your alchemy supplies all the things that you like having about you you obviously need materials and stuff to do your whole thing that you enjoy doing is there anything like by chance that you enjoy shopping for maybe? purchasing food generally okay food spices I know how much you enjoy spicing your meals so say maybe you were shopping at a market someplace and there were some rare spices that you wanted to get your hands on you go to the vendor and you ask the price and the price is quite high so high in fact that you go to your wallet and it turns out you are a few coins short and have to move on without making a purchase However, in this scenario, as you're walking away, you happen across a small purse, a small coin purse, containing a bit of money and some form of identification for a person. It's somebody's lost wallet. And lo and behold, there's some money within it, and if you took some, you'd have just enough to buy those spices. Given all the circumstances that I just proposed to you, what would you do? Take me through your course of action and explain why you'd make those choices. This is a peculiar hypothetical, but all right. I've just been, you know, thinking some things. I have found money which does not belong to me. There are two obvious choices. Use the money or don't. Try and find who it belongs to. I suppose it really doesn't matter which choice is made. I would make the one that seems more reasonable at the time. So... I don't really know unless I was in that situation. I mean... If I was... 
of course, and for example, I would use the well, money on food rather than You don't spice. need, you don't, yeah, you don't, well, the scenario is that you would be using the money for spices, so no, that wouldn't factor in. Well, spices are unnecessary, ultimately. So sure, then I would but... find whoever's nearby was aware of whose wallet it was. If nobody nearby knew, then I would take it for myself. Like I said, a hierarchy of logic. I work off of who needs it most, and if I cannot tell who needs it most, then I apply it to myself. It would be simply wasteful to just leave the wallet behind. Yeah. At that point, you're leaving the decision up to somebody else. I think maybe I made a mistake giving the wallet to you. Maybe I should make, try to make the choice for myself next time. Hmm. Oh well. Win some, you lose some. Have a good night, Halloween. Hmm. And rock. I suppose he'll climb up into a tree and just watch for the rest of the night. As far as their, like, um, watch part goes. Yeah, they'll come back over, and before just hopping back up onto the cart, they'll just be like, tap over it gently. Yeah, I'm up. <clears throat> My turn, huh? Stars are nice tonight. Good night for yeah. a watch. That's good. I mean, Care most people it? probably won't try to... <clears throat> Am I alright? Yeah, I'm good. I said take care. Ah, sorry. Uh, listening it's skills right. are still coming back. I'm waking up. Too many crickets in your ears? No. I just, uh... I have no idea. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> Good night. First off, you're maybe a good day's travel from the, like, main main road. And one of the things you notice very faintly is the small little glimmer of a lantern of some sort of carriage that's just going along the main road. Doesn't seem to be hurting anything, but there's this... This seems like a single cart, one guy, and a horse, traveling at night. And then other than that, you notice, yeah, the stars are really pretty. Very bright. Also, there are not a lot of crickets. I think Vari chased them all off. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like watches the cart at one point, just uh, traveling at night. I can each their own, but that feels kind of dangerous in this area. Eh. <sighs> hmm. What time would it have been when I sent that? You know, I didn't even think about that. And I probably freaking sent that to her while she was sleeping. Yeah, well. Before you wake Varya, there's something I want to do because this would be the middle of the night. Oh? Rain. Oh, uh, yeah? You're dreaming. Okay. Floating. You're floating in this empty... Gray void. It's not cold, it's not warm, but you're aware that you're floating. And you feel a warm hand touch your cheek. Huh? Hello? Look up, and you see just this bright light. And you hear the vague beating of wings. Uh, hello? And it doesn't say anything to you, but a feeling washes over you. Like it's asking a question. And holding its hand out to you. I would reach for the hand. And the light kind of washes over you. And you wake up. <gasps> I just kind of look around me. Kind of like check myself over. Nothing feels different, but you feel- or well, nothing physically feels different, but there is a pleasant weight in your chest. A level of contentness that wasn't there before. I look at the back of that hand. 
You don't see anything currently. I see. Okay. I... I tried... Hmm. Rain just kind of... Rain would poke, poke Erevan. Erevan? Uh, time is it? Is it my watch now? I feel weird. What kind of weird? I had a strange dream. And now I was floating. And then I heard like wings. And then there was like a bright light. And then I woke up, and now I feel different. Eh, sounds like something answered your prayers. Really? What? What do you think they wanted? Dude, I don't know. It's gods and shit. They just, they just kind of do sometimes. <laughs> I'm, uh, look, Eric. I'm, uh, look, sorry. Fucking rain. Sorry, Rain. I'm just, I'm just tired. <sighs> Cat. We'll, we'll deal with it in the morning. All right. Um, I'd like to cast light. <laughs> sure, you can cast light. What are you casting on your hand? Yes. <laughs> just kind of like this on my chest and just kind of focusing on it and then accidentally cast light. <laughs> You're suddenly shocked by how bright it is. <laughs> this is my up. I rolled over. Aravan! Aravan! Um, what? Um, look! Uh, look! Oh, why did you light a bro Why did you light a lantern? What the heck? I didn't. I lit up my hand. I, but why? I, huh? What? Huh? <laughs> can, can you turn it off? I'm, I'm, I'm not the only- we're not the only ones trying to sleep here, right? I will attempt to drop it- to turn it off? <laughs> yeah, it's easy as soon as you stop focusing on it. Play with that in the morning when we're not bothering or risking waking people up, alright? I'm already... I... I'll wake you up in a bit, okay? And go, go, if you're, if you can't get back to sleep, go help keep watch. Alright. Oh, man noises as he falls asleep. <laughs> it was just like, mm -hmm. it's another day in the life of random bullshit. Alright, we'd walk away, so, away, light on, light off. Light on. Light off. <laughs> My god. She's becoming a lightning bug. I just said we'll test it out in the morning. She can't- she's, she's a kid of a, She's a kid of a new toy, what'd you expect? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, how do I want to wake her up? She always- Ah, oh, it's easy. Rain accidentally sing signals the passing cart, sends them an SOS. <laughs> they come in that, here and kill everyone. That would be hilarious. Uh, Eric climbs up the rock, uh, because Vari seems to do this a lot. He just pushes her off the rock to wake her up. <laughs> I'm the king of the rock now, bitch. Vari had, like, her cloak over himself, over herself, like a, like a shroud. Like a, <laughs> like a, like a body at a morgue, basically. And she just, like, one hand reaches up and just removes it from her face, and she's just, like, Frowning. My rock now. Alright, fine. You can have the rock. Cool. You would have a warm cloak. Nah. Only cast precipitation. Alright, well, and if I you want it. my rock while I keep watch, then I guess you're just gonna have to listen to me, huh? I mean, I could, but you could also go bother the kid who is playing with white. Oh, great. Uh, I don't wanna listen, Arian. Like I'm, a, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a kind of a sorry spot right now. I recently just like <sighs> broke apart. I just the ladies' club is no more, unfortunately. You should it's keep sad, an eye on but... the kid who is constantly using light on her hand, which might give away opposition to I don't know animals or the one random cart I saw going by. They might get the wrong idea. <sighs> Fair. Oh, no. Yeah, I could probably go babysit. That's a... Ooh, I almost... <laughs> I already started, like, reaching for her head, but it was just like, hmm, I almost treated uh, you like one of my kids. 
do do hawks like hunt at night? It depends. Some are. There's like night hawks, right? Like those are things. Yeah, there are some that are nocturnal, but typically those okay, are. Okay, well, I'm gonna go make sure that rain doesn't do too good of an impression of a tasty little glowworm, because I wouldn't want her getting, you know, Fair. preyed upon by birds of prey. And bats, if they're out and about in this area. Bats, yes, bats kind of get big round here. Don't know if you were aware. I was not. I'm going to sleep now. This rock is going to be nice and warm for a little bit. Fine, but I'm coming back for that rock later. Ew. 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 Ours is gonna is just gonna be like kind of trailing her like at the edge of the light. I'll do a stealth just to see how unsneaky I am. <laughs> what could I do with thaumaturgy if I wanted to like, create like some ghosts and like some specters and shit? It's very similar to minor illusion. <laughs> so the, yeah, they're gonna kind of be like voices just kind of like coming through the dry gap the grass around you. Like at first you think it might just be the wind rustling through the fields. But then you start to hear kind of like something that sounds like a very guttural, low language that begins to kind of like rise in pitch and intensity. As soon as Shane notices this, she'll drop the light, draw her start. Oh no, they're back. As soon as she drops the light, I'm just going to cut the voices immediately. Rain will look quizzically. Bring out the light again. Yeah, the whispers are- I'm gonna immediately cast Lamaturgy again, the whispers are gonna start coming back. They're gonna start low again and just begin rising. Light off. And she's gonna cut them. Light on. <laughs> she's gonna do the same thing, I guess. And continue doing this. The light makes noises, that's cool. <laughs> oh my god. I think Vari's at this point going to run through the drug- dry, <laughs> dry grass and like be like, Oh, Rain, get down quickly! What? She's going to like draw one foot motion, draw her short sword, and get into a ready pose. Ready Turn the start. light off. Cuts the light. Ah, whew. ah, that's a close one. What? What's going on? Light rays. Light rays. Nothing to be worried about. Just keep the light off, and you'll be fine. Um. I'm going to do a deception. Yeah. Sorry. For a second, what? I thought... what? 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 You haven't heard of For you haven't heard of I... light wraiths before? It's why when you go to no. bed at night, you have to turn out the lights. Otherwise, the light wraiths will come and carry you away. For a second, I thought the weird things were back. Oh, hang on, wait, huh? Um, sometimes in certain places, I see things, and they seem to see me, but no one else notices them. It's really frightening. Invisible things? I guess. It hasn't happened in a very long while, though. Can I, like... Hang on a second. I need to hold still real quick, right? Uh, I'm going to try to, like, inspect, I guess, her eyes. See if there's anything, like, going on with them. Like, if there's, like, enchantments placed upon them or something. Her eyes look fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't look like you're cursed or anything, but... <sighs> I've never been good at gauging that exactly. Um... Oh, I had a dream that I can do magic now. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm thrilled. You don't seem very thrilled. Uh, I mean... Is it not that What? Cool? What kind of- what kind of magic, though, Rain? Yes, light. <laughs> okay, okay. Listen, there was a reason I was trying to trick you earlier, okay? Actually. We can't be doing that in the middle of the night, or else everyone, everyone will know where we are. I mean everyone. Uh, okay, maybe I can do something else, and I'd like to, like, look around and You spotting. should annoy Erevan with that during the day. I think that's going to be a... Oh, <laughs> I think I, be oh, I, oh, I plan to. But I, I will look around. Try to find, like, a good tree that looks like it wouldn't hurt anything if I, uh... Did something to it. And, uh... I wonder if I can throw it. And I'm going to hold up my hand. But the one with the rune. And I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast on the tree. Sure. Harry, did you see that? Um, I don't quite know if you should be doing that either, Rain. You remember? You remember the story that you told us? 
Yeah, you're right. Hey, cat. Can I have? <laughs> can I have coincidentally shoelace be sleeping in this tree? <laughs> yeah, shoestring's gonna lower down like the limb of a tree and like touch Rain's shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Rain, something touches your shoulder from the tree. Rain jumps like- that, even that I can't jump when they launch like fucking 10 feet in the air. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> oh my god, Rain, what have you done? It's a cucumber tree! Uh, uh, what? Cucumbers don't grow in trees? Yeah, uh, we- mm-hmm. I'm not a farmer. So I wouldn't know that, uh, that's just... Hang on, are you shoelace? Yeah, that's shoestring, hey. Shoestring says the light was bothering him as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Shoestring. It's okay. Uh... But yeah, I couldn't do this before, but now I can, and it's cool. I had a, d a dream about bright a bright light and beating wings. I want to talk to you for a bit about... About? Something, maybe. Hang on. Yeah, let's go. Let's go sit underneath that tree. How about that? All right. There's a neat hole in it now. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you might have actually made shoestring a nice new hollow that he can sleep in. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Vari's just gonna like sit down at the base of this tree, basically. Rain would sit next to Vari. Shoestring climbs up the tree. You remind me a lot of myself. How oh, so? I'm not paranoid or anything. No, you're not. I wasn't always paranoid either. Paranoid either. Yeah? You know how we were talking about Uriet and Celsus having a lot of parallels between the two of them? That I was saying it was sort of like a sort of a deal of fate that drew us, drew them together on this one singular mission, right? Yeah, I guess so. Right. I, I told Hellite that maybe in due time that she'd see that there's a lot more than just the one coincidence there that maybe... Four six-sided bones landed on a one. <laughs> it's funny that it's a one because that's the lowest number. Some would say that's the unluckiest number. Some people even say that one is the loneliest number. I just thought that it was funny, you know, that despite everything that's happened to you at some stage in some way or form, that's also happened to me. I just found it funny that you ended up Paylor as your deity, as your, what's the word? Patron? Patron, thank you. I mean, I spent enough time around Erevan, I guess. That is interesting, yes. So you would say that he had a major play in the role, so to speak, of you... Discovering your path that it would be alongside Pelor as opposed to any other god or deity out there Yeah I guess. Okay, okay, yeah, you know that that makes a lot of sense <sighs> It's been ever since we heading back to the back to the mire, you know, I've had a lot of a lot of history personal history stuff on the mind. I'd like you to um Celsus has already done something brave by introducing everyone to his secret friend. I might as well offer the same, you know, opportunity to you. Yeah? How much would you like to speak to Squidge? Who's no Squidge? Uh, as Paylor is your patron, Squidge is mine. And you can just speak to them? Mm-hmm. Okay. That might be interesting. Since day one, I was able to talk to Squidge, so... How do you, how do you talk to Squidge? Well, it's not... 
quite your run-of-the-mill circumstances, you'll see. Um, it's not something that a lot of people get to do when they become an acolyte of a certain faith. I think Vari is going to show Rain again the arm, the same one that she had noticed earlier uh, was scarred and has the um, has the brace around it. And she's going to do the thing where she just lifts up her arm and there's the sharp sound of a metal impact as again the brace glows, shatters, and then her arm will transform. Hello. Your arm, wait, your arm's, uh, squidges your arm? Yep, you remember when I was talking about parallels, Rain? Well, yeah, here you go. Looks at the symbol on her hand, looks at the snake, panics for a moment. <laughs> Rain would show Vare the, uh, symbol. Mm-hmm. Uh, hello. I'm oh, Rain. so, yeah. Hello again, Squidge. It's it's nice to uh, be able to pick up our conversation so soon again, isn't it? Mm. Good evening, Vari. Rain. Hi. You're cool. Thank you. I like to think that I am at least interesting to most. I mean, you're a snake attached to Vari's arm. That's pretty cool. Drastic measures. In drastic situations. Yeah, I kinda... You know, kinda, kinda lost an arm as well, Rain. Kinda, you know, parallels. I got God to restore it again, but just, you know, like this. Instead of like that. Huh. So, wait, you touched a weird lantern, too? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, not quite. Uh, how did you lose your arm? Uh, I would usually say I lost it in a fight, but yeah, that's not quite the truth. Did Squidge eat it? Oh, no, 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 Squidge did not eat my arm brain. No, no, no. I'm not a flesh type myself. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Squidge Thank eats the immortal the souls of the damned. And nothing else. That's a joke. So you eat... Hello, excuse you. So you eat... <laughs> I rather like strawberries. So you eat bad people's souls? If I can get a hold of them, sure. If strawberries are bad people, then yes. <laughs> I see. I know. I know at least one bad person. Are they a strawberry? They were my father. Does he look like a strawberry? He he mildly he mildly resembles a strawberry. Mildly resembles a strawberry. There's something to that. I swear to God, there's something to that. Strawberries are evil. No. Vegetables. Blech. Very. Listen, we can have our differences, you and I. It's okay. And I don't want you collapsing and contracting scurvy. Listen, I ate... I ate some, like, plant in the curry and in the soup. Rain, you're, you're, you're with me on this, right? Aren't vegetables just the worst? Um... I mean... Potatoes are vegetables, and the boiled potato's pretty good. Boiled potatoes are kind of... Yeah, they kind of slap hard. They're kind of like rocks, but you... Eat them. Sometimes, when I was having... Then a they're nothing like rocks. Edible rocks. I've tried. I'll say it, I'll, I've tried. Sometimes, when I was having a good day, and felt happy, I would uh, snatch a potato from a market stall and... And boil it. Wait a minute, you could definitely eat rock squidge. Remember remember back at the uh at the saltwater marshes, the uh, the salt refineries? Mm-hmm. Those kinda of like rocks. Sea salt? Salt is technically a rock, sure. How do rocks taste? But it's a water soluble rock, Vari. 
Yeah, yeah, I feel like I feel like we're splitting hairs now. It's still a rock. Yes, but rocks also... you can eat. The world is an amazing place. How do rocks taste? Crunchy. Crunchy. That yeah, not sense. not always that good, believe it or not. So, how long have you had a god for an arm? Well, I'd like to believe that I've had Squidge around watching over me for longer than I've had him as an arm. You were on my radar. But I've been in this current circumstance for... About two cycles of the seasons now, so... Yeah, nearly two years. Actually, a few more than that. Maybe three years, would you say? I'm not good with time. Like How long did I have you with me, Squidge, when I was still a part of the Sisterhood? Oh... That's always... That's, that part is always kind of a blur to me. I think you left at the start of summer. Mm-hmm. And then... That's right, because I was walking, I was wandering around for a while, and then the cold season came around, and that's when I reached Lemstead, thankfully. Thankfully. So, how about you, Rain? Do you feel like this whole thing that you've sort of... Part of yourself that you've been, you know, able to come in touch with, do you think this is going to be the... Grand new chapter in the life of Rain, so to speak? I mean... Do you think that this is something significant that you've reached? Yeah, I mean, it's already been a new chapter. I good. I have a family again. Good. But uh, it's definitely cool to be able to, to do this because I couldn't do this before. Maybe I can use it to help. I mean, yeah, I can tell you that there's certainly ways that you'll be able to help. And again, when. I was going through my journey, I was looking for ways that I could help as well. So, maybe here I can help again. So, can you tell me a little bit more about the things that you've been seeing? Well, I haven't seen them in a while, not since we left, but they look like people, but they're kind of, they're kind of a see-through and their eyes look really distant. Some of them look like they're hurt, but they don't seem to act like it. They just kind of stare. Okay, okay. Well, here's the full scenario, Squidge. Rain's definitely seeing, like, souls of the damned. Or something along those lines. Uh, mm. And I wanted I wanted a second opinion on something here. Can you, like, take a quick look at her, make sure she's not horribly cursed? Sure. If you insist. And the Squidge, Squidge will, like, kind of observe Rain and, like, inspect her closely. I don't see anything wrong with her. I don't sense anything. Okay, well, I was thinking maybe once we reach Aetherbound, then we could take her to somebody there, maybe? That's concerning. Listen, I literally... I want to try to get more from Erevan. I just need to gauge whether or not literally everybody in this traveling party is being followed. I mean, I ran away from home, but I don't think I'm being followed. I don't think he cared. Past follows you in strange ways, Rain. I didn't expect to be confronting mine again so soon, but oh, you know, here we are. Things be that way. I say he ran away, but I just kind of woke up and everyone was gone. Um. Some would say that finding a new life is running away. Maybe. Those people are but, dummies. But if you if starting a new life ends with you being happier, is it really a bad thing, though? I mean, no, it's not a bad thing. I wasn't meaning to suggest it was a bad thing. I was just waxing. Waxing? You waxing. don't have any wax, though. No, I don't, but I'm waxing figuratively. <laughs> just, like, just like the moon pointing upwards at the sky. Just like the moon can be waxing, but it doesn't have wax. 
You're not how light, Rain. You should understand this kind of thing. Rain <laughs> just kind of looks at you like a deer in headlights, confused. Yeah, listen. I know I might have broken up the whole thing that we had going with the ladies' club, but not yeah. all hope is lost because we can still gather around some other purpose. The Friends of God's Club. Yeah, Friends with God's Club. I had a thing that I was trying to do with Howlite, which didn't quite go successfully in the way I wanted it to, so maybe you can have better luck, because it seems like maybe you're a bit more of an apt dreamer. I mean, I dreamed and woke up with with magic, so maybe? Mm-hmm. Well, first, before we try anything, we gotta make sure you aren't horribly debilitatedly, like, cursed. Which, I think Squidge pretty much cleared up, but, hey, it's best to get as many people looking into this kind of thing as possible. Maybe I'm not the best judge of things, but somebody at Aetherbound, someone part of that traveling group might be... Most, most people just think I'm, when I tell them, most people just think I'm just seeing things. One said I might be just be touched in the head. Well, those people obviously haven't seen things in their lives, so... How would they know? True. May maybe you're right. But I haven't seen them in a while, so... But... They're so frightening when I do... Did something. they ever try to talk to you or something? You mentioned it was happening again when I was doing the whole, like, whisper thing. They... I don't think so. It was kind of... Looked. I think they knew that I could see them, but they mostly just kind of looked. You got like, you got a bad impression from them, though, is what I'm gathering. It was. They they, they felt like malicious. I don't know what to make of them. It's just. You don't think they might have been malicious? I just find it frightening that. Only I could see them and no one else could. Well, shoot, well. I was... I was... Humoring the idea that maybe they're not bad, but if you haven't seen them in a while when things have been going good for you, I don't know how true that is. Because the situation could be is that they were there to look after you when things were going bad, or maybe they were there to pull you in the direction of things going badly. I don't know. It's hard to gauge that kind of thing. Why? Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of them, though. Why would they no? be there to watch? You remember how I said that I felt like... Remember how Squidge literally just confirmed that he was... Uh, I was, quote-unquote, on his radar? I have no fucking clue what that means. Don't ask me. Uh, Looks over at Squidge. But it's kind of it's kind into saying that, yeah, he was looking over me. And I was thinking that maybe... The things that you were seeing could have been sent by Paylor to look after you. You know? Maybe. Maybe I'll ask Erevan and see what he knows. I haven't told him about the, the, the things that I see sometimes. Well, if he calls you crazy or paranoid, you can come talk to me instead. Thank you, Vari. I will. Okay, cool. Now, I need to wrap up the rest of my, my watch and probably try to remember who's going next after me. You want me to watch with you? Hmm. No. Okay. Uh, with that, Vari's just gonna stand up and kind of like, like a magic trick almost, just with her one hand over her arm and the brace reappears and it's just gone. Gonna knock in an Uriot and <laughs> launch him off the rock. Oh my god. Should have seen that coming. <laughs> It's, um, it's not me, it's the ghosts. <laughs> oh, you little shit. <laughs> you little shit. <laughs> Vari is just going to nudge Celsus awake. Mm, yes. Hello down there. Hello. Ah, 
Sun's about to come up. It's your turn. Mm, okay. Definitely. Noted. Awesome. I'm going this way. Oh, I'm wobbling. Oh, I can't quite get my footing. There we go. <laughs> Lies face down on a rock again. Yeah, nothing eventful. Nothing eventful. Unless you, do you want to talk to Alexandria, or are you just two, you two just gonna sit? We're just gonna sit in silence. So cute. There's nothing to be said. All right. Next morning. Me with my not girlfriend sitting on my not watch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you got sad all over my rock. <laughs> and all right. Uh, next day of traveling. This is the last like full day of travel before like you'll be in sight of the Aetherbound place. I'm gonna be helping Rain figure out their magics. And I'm just okay. keeping an eye out while I'm mm. still driving a car. <laughs> yeah, Alexandru, he's a really pretty bird. But other than that, nice. there's a couple carts that go by. The closer you get to Kleka, the more carts you see. How many of them look at us funny for having a little blue man driving <laughs> our wagon? Our car? A couple of them. Like, at least one of them looks at you funny. <laughs> or it, but... Doesn't push it. Can I use thaumaturgy to make weird faces at them? Sure! <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty smooth uh, riding, and as you kind of get towards the end of the day, you can either push it and, like, get up later in the day the next day and arrive at the Aetherbound place, or you can stay a little farther out away from them and then go in in the morning. Are you able to show up there in the middle of the night like freaks? Sure, if you really <laughs> want to. That'll fuck up your sleep, and I don't think we want to do sleep RP again. Showing up in the middle of the night, that's very rude. Yeah, that's that's probably also not good. <laughs> you should know as well as I that you were seen as a monster to some people, Harry. They might shoot at you. Yeah, exactly. Listen, I, I was I was figuring that because they're druidic and all, that they might be, you know, cotton to freaks around here, so to speak. But they're also... It does also, raise a valid concern of mine. You um, know. Are your people, um, common in this area, do you think, Valerie? Around uh, what here? What I'm getting at is, would the Etherbound have a reason to be suspicious of you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um... <laughs> Yeah, this is this is like around here you don't get people and agents from the sisterhood all the goddamn time. I'm sure they know how to deal with them, so Yeah, I'm gonna have to be going in hood up for this one, I think. But also just not go in. Boring. But smart. Boring. I don't know how light you should know as Best as anyone that sometimes you can be smart, but circumstances will drive you to make stupid decisions. It seems like your forte. You should find who that wallet belongs to. Mm, still looking. <laughs> it's a hypothetical, <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. He's trying to get under my skin. Am I succeeding? No. No. I mean, if you wanted to get into the skin, you would need to use like a dagger or some uh, sort of mine's weapon. all dull or yet. I haven't gotten it sharpened. You could also just buy it. To get under my skin, I would have to care. I mean, yeah, she doesn't excited. care about me. Yeah, I'm over it. Or I could just cut off a piece of your flesh and then put it on my arm. Boom, I'm under your skin. That's like wearing her skin, though. I think that's a uh, fine, kinda, kinda crazy, but also kinda hardcore. Fine. I don't want to think about that. Cut off a piece of your tentacle hair and make her eat it. There, a very small part of you is under her skin. You're in her stomach, I'm which gonna is make technically her under her skin. I don't like where this conversation is going, so I'm just gonna force her to eat a cricket instead. What is it with you and eating crickets? Cricket tea has amused her to okay, you know what? obsession. 
Riot brought up something interesting that I think we should just like get all our cards out on the table right now. Who here has eaten another person? I'm sorry, what? Okay, Depends okay. on how you define a no. person, I suppose. Maybe from how light. Celsius, I don't want to know. Uh. <laughs> but you Let's can answer set still. Up camp, and we'll meet the. Celsius does not answer. Morning. Yes, I agree with Idiot. As much as making terrible first impressions is not on my <laughs> to do list, I think we should. Just try. I mean. Erevan, have you ever e just, like, eaten a guy? No. Rain? No, I haven't. Again, I feel like you need to define your personage. The one time I wish I knew a, wolf a, person? a person to sleep with magic. Would you consider, say, shoelace a person? Ah, uh, no. Shoelace is like an animal. Are you not an animal, Larry? Uh, I'm an animal, but I'm different. How? I'm like an animal, you know? <laughs> how? How different? Uh, no, how are you different? You are flesh How and am bone? I different? Uh, well, how you did see, you get to define your own personhood anyway? <laughs> it's quite complicated how light I'd be explaining it all day. I find it quite simple. You're Shoot, am I just bone. like them? Now I'm not a sure. A snake is made of flesh and bone. Both of you have thoughts. Both of you can communicate. Therefore, you are both people. Therefore, by that definition, I have eaten people. Have you I eaten do not find it look like you? I do not find it polite to consume things without paying proper respect. Wolves, for example, are particularly human-like, and my people find it only reasonable to pay the proper respects to them. God, you know, whenever I look at a wolf, I think to myself, they're just like us. You're so right, Alight. Like... Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> now, if you consider eating a spiritual wolf the same as eating another person, then I would have to disagree. Okay, because, like, a spiritual wolf... Well, like Alexandria. That ain't, that ain't I would not consider no a book a person unless it's Alexandria. But even still, she is simply a book, not flesh and bone. I feel like you're dodging the question. I feel like you don't understand your own question. I understand everything that I ask. <laughs> <laughs> Would you eat someone? Yes. Like, I'm not talking about, like something like shoelace or like a wolf, but would you eat a friend? If the situation recalled for it. Would you return the wallet? Would you eat a friend? I don't see what point you're trying to make with this, Vari. These are all hypotheticals based on circumstance, that of which we are not in. I'm just curious, Ella. Like, can you blame me for being curious? About whether or not I'd eat a person? Yes. No, I can't blame you. But I can call you out for your insanity. <laughs> I, like, I wouldn't eat you because I think you'd taste bitter. And like ozone. Ally is not a person. Can I not just define it to you? Flesh, blood, and bone. Ally, I don't think you... I think you missed what I was saying just now. I was saying I wouldn't eat you. Yes, but I don't believe I constitute as a person in this hypothetical. I'm not saying you are constituting as one theory. All I'm saying you're constituting as is someone that I would not eat. Okay, well then define it as, th as that. I think you're trying to figure out whether or not people are people, and your definition is severely lacking. Hella, you're going to wake up with a cricket in your mouth. <laughs> Wait, Halai, what do you mean you're not a person? I don't have blood. You don't At least not in the traditional sense. That's not what makes a person a person. For some, 
I'm using Vahari's definition. Well, Vahari is an idiot, you know I that. I didn't give a definition. <laughs> I tried to come to a conclusion as to what you believed. That was the closest you, you definition. Have, you have thoughts and feelings and you talk to people and you to make decisions yes, for but yourself. So you does a, a person. snake. Yeah? Do you think that if a snake thinks that the snake is a person? I mean, other snakes are people to snakes, I'm sure. And snakes are people. They're, walk... they're their people, though. I'm talking about our people, you and I. You walk around and you do things for fun, you enjoy things, and you do stuff. You think, therefore, you are. None of us are your people. Well, to a certain extent, we all kind of look alike, don't we? I do not have snakes on my head. You have two arms and two legs. So does a bear. Bears can be people. I met my a bug point bear is once. That your he definition really nice. does not have a good enough anchor point. Does if you really start mean... defining people as people and people not as people, I cannot be called a person. And as we've seen here, oh. Rain finds that abhorrent. Uh, Rain's not old enough or smart enough to be able to. Uh, uh, I need older. Why are we trying to? Why are we trying to teach a ten-year-old the psychological implications of personhood? <laughs> I'm trying to teach Vari the psychological implications of personhood, since she asked whether or not we'd eat one. I stand by my statement. <laughs> 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 Wrecked. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm currently taking a look at the circumstances, and circumstances are telling me I should make the decision. That decision being, I refuse to talk to you about this any further. It was a random question to just ask out of the blue. So, have you eaten people, Vari? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drop. The damn question! <laughs> you guys want to camp for the night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Calm night. Nothing happens. You can kind of see the glimmers off in the distance of like a camp or like a small tent settlement. Alright, everyone. Are you ready to go, I guess, do some dealings with some hippies? Everyone got their nose plugs? I'm going to repeat that I'm the only one that needs to do dealings with these. I want to meet hippies, them. Hippies, as you put it. I mean, yeah, I want to meet them too. I'm not stopping you from meeting them. I'm saying don't force yourself to interfere. <laughs> Guys, I think Alight hates us. I do not hate you. I do she not hates love us. You. She doesn't, no, she doesn't want capacity. anything to do with us. Var, you have a bad habit of getting uh, yourself in- You and Rain both have a bad habit of getting yourself into trouble. Oh, you're putting the blame on me, but can't you see my heart's Do broken Do you remember this? when we were being cautious, Vari, and you put it out there that you need to be cautious in order to keep your head? Hey, I am listen, being cautious. Listen, let the people who didn't get their minds read be the ones talking right now. How about that? Maybe if this person had found a wallet properly, they would be able to learn what's proper and what's not. I love this wallet. <laughs> it's making me go. It's making me go wall-eyed. That's for sure. I'm going to go see and find a see if I can't find a representative of the Etherbound. Follow me if you will. Yeah, I mean, don't you need someone? Don't you need like a designated driver or something? What? I can do that. Don't worry. Vari, I don't trust you to catch a Often cricket. Oftentimes, when you go and have meetings <laughs> with you Vari, know, you are probably the single least trustworthy, most trust, <laughs> least trustworthy person in the party, and you're simultaneously the most paranoid. Yeah, I Shut can stay up. sober better than any of you. <laughs> listen, listen. Alight wants to Do go have a spiritual I'm... journey with the leader of these... Oh, no, no, no. Cease. Cease your blathings right now. Do you think I'm going there to get high? I mean, isn't that how you come across, like, 
deep-seated answers about the about the nature no. of identity, what makes a person a person. No. Considering I've never come across this identity, I don't technically know, but... Mm -hmm. I can safely say getting high is not the goal. Well, you've... Sounds like someone who's never tried it before. Are you only going there to get high? I don't think I can, can I? <laughs> Erevan, I want to go there to get hopelessly addicted to some sort of substance. Therefore, I'll be truly at rock bottom, and the only direction from that is upwards. You're already addicted to life. I'm addicted to live, laugh, love. <laughs> Yeah, so as you approach, you see these kind of, like, semi-permanent housing structures that are, like, partially tent and partially, like, wooden concrete structure. Um, and you see a lot of- it seems like a bustling town, but the weird thing that strikes everyone as you kind of get closer is everyone is, like, dressed head to toe in, like, Thick muslin robes, um, and they have these kind of mesh overlay, uh, like mesh face masks almost. Some of them kind of have like woven basket face masks on them, and as a couple like outer central guards see you, they kind of call out to you, "Halt! N come no further." The town is under quarantine. We cannot allow you to enter. Oh, that's fun. Hmm. Hmm, did I hear quarantine? May I ask the nature of this quarantine? Something has come upon our apiaries. And thus, the bees have turned against us in some way. Something has happened to them. Some sort of infection or some sort of wasp has infected them and mutated them. Well, is it just mutated bees, or is the disease also spreading to people? The- it seems the poison can affect people themselves. Well, I'm a Pardon healer. Me. Is there any way that I might be able to help out? My group has traveled far to reach the Etherbound. Um, a very pertinent question, say, small risk of infection is but an inconvenience to me. I can insist that my party leave, and I merely enter with the appropriate safeguards. Or I can come back at a later date, or furthermore help to still this infection. I myself am a practiced alchemist. Some natural-born remedies could be a great assist in this type of a situation. I will, of course, respect your boundaries, sir. I would have to talk with our leader, if you would kindly wait outside of Right where you are and go no further. Understandable. That I can do. Uh, one of the guards leaves and heads, like, straight through town. You kind of lose sight of him after a while. And then, like, 10, 15 minutes later, he comes back with um, another person, face obscured. Uh, hello, I hear you have come far to meet us? Uh, yes. My name is Howlite. I come from the Northern Bloodhunter tribes. I'm here seeking knowledge. I have been told that you, as part of the Aetherbound, are aware of ancient magics and perhaps rituals to attain a greater form. Um, if it is at all possible, I wish to seek an audience. You said you're a Bloodhunter? Yes. We can accommodate three of your party at a time. We have no more robes, but if you have some sort of robe and some sort of face covering, you all may enter. Thank you. That sounds fair. We can... We can fix something like that, can't we, gang? Come on. Face covering? Mm, I've already kind of got half of that going on with this. Uh, Mari has like a little like scarf thing that she can pull up over her face. I don't think my... It's probably not going to pass their inspection, I'd say. Rain would have a little traveling cloak, so she would put the hood up on that, and as for her face... Mm. Oh, I will use their cloak along with, like, dried grass interwoven with some more pleasant-smelling flowers. 
Do you have a name of which I can refer to you as? My mother was Vega. My name is... Asis. I'm the current temporary leader of the Aetherbound. Uh, just good to meet your acquaintance. Uh, the three of you that needed robes are provided with robes and face masks. I think that's the go-ahead. Yeah, I suppose I will follow Asus. Yeah. We... So just walking through town, are we, are we able to see, like, is it just a specific zone of the town that's been quarantined? It's the whole town. The whole town. Okay. You can see on one side, particularly the western side of town, there are more guards. Kind of giving you the idea of that is where the apiaries mm -hmm. are. What is, like, general structure of the little settlement here? Is it mainly, like, cloth and fabrics and non-magical type stuff? Or is there a feel that there is a magical energy here of some sort? What kind of magical energy are you looking for? I guess Howlett's just kind of wondering, does this seem like just a bunch of run-of-the-mill people, or is there a feeling like, yeah, there's something special about these folk? Like, they feel like they feel people. Them. They feel like a much more connected town than many towns that you've been in. Okay. They are less of a- it's less of a town and more of a community. So it feels kind of like home, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think they would just sort of settle back into the groove a little bit more. Not even realizing that they weren't at ease, but relaxing just a little bit. Asus, if you don't mind me asking, uh, generally how would you say things have been handled so far around here? Is it going well? Do you have injured that maybe I can help tend to? What? I do not recommend going to our sick. You can call them that. We have found out that after an amount of time, depending on the number of stings from these, we don't have a name for them yet, but after an amount of time, they do revert to normal, unaware of what had happened. Mm. So it is like they're briefly out of their mind? Like something is yes. controlling them. They all do similar things, all along Something the same- Something is controlling them. Yes, like they're all along the same kind of orders. Because I've heard of, well, certain poisons can drive the affected to madness. There's a pattern going on here. Well, hmm. That's interesting. Like uh, how fungus moves to create spores, these bees are trying to create more of them to continue expanding and infecting. And that's how the sickness... And that's how the sickness reproduces by infecting people? And then... Infecting multiplying. pretty much anything. We've seen birds get stung. We've seen us, a few rodents or so. We've been trying to keep the area clear, but we can't necessarily, like, do everything. I was going to suggest, because I have access to magical cures, lesser restoration, that sort of thing, but that might lesser be... Lesser restoration works on the less impaired, less than 10 stings. Less than more 10 than stings. 10 stings, we need okay. a greater restoration, and more than 20, we just have to wait it out. None of us, except for maybe my mother, might have had anything, but... My mother got stung, and she's been in a coma. Will always recover from the stings, or is it...? We haven't seen anyone get as stung as much as my mother. We never actually got to count. She's been... ...recovering, slowly. But... ...they always seem to come out of it eventually. Hmm. You said that you wouldn't recommend me tend to do the ones you are currently afflicted, because I'm assuming you're worried about me also getting stung, but for one reason or another, I'm not entirely worried about that. 
So if there's anywhere that I can go to maybe lend a hand, try to reduce the suffering of the afflicted... Then I don't know what you're on about, but I'm sure you realize that we're not super kindly to your, fr- your kind around here. I imagine the sisterhood's been giving you a lot of trouble. Asus. The sisterhood has been bothering us for decades. We've managed to be tenuous with them, but we don't like them coming into our area. This was a I'm problem that I didn't expected we would have. Um, you're actually traveling. I don't particularly care, personally, but I know that anyone above my age will. You'd let me continue. Vari is not a part of the sisterhood. Yes, thank you. I feel like if you, like, yeah, let me get to that. Uh, I think that's pretty important to note that, yes, if you are bothered by this sisterhood, then you're in good company. We are one the same with that. Vari may look really shifty, and she has a really paranoid Okay, I get it. I'm sometimes. suspicious as hell. <laughs> but, she, but, she's actually, but she's actually nice once you get to know her. She's not a problem. That's not apparent from Yeah, I've run into this scenario before. Insane. You guys remember when I told you about the bandit story? Yeah. I the wouldn't want to go try help to help out. Sisterhood. I wouldn't want to go try to help out and then have people assume I'm sisterhood and then, you know, things the blow up from The fact that you there. knew that you were, they were called the sisterhood already speaks leagues and miles about you. What? They're very secretive. Then how do you know they're called the... My mother. And considering you mentioned how they were likely the strongest spellcaster in the region, they're also probably the one you were here to visit, Halalite. Yes, I think We have other strong spellcasters, but my mother was just on another level. She has been the leader for the last hundred years or so. If it assuades any concerns, our trip was not immediately started just for my own purposes. I do believe we are on the path to eventually clash with the sisterhood ourselves. I wouldn't put it past this. You're getting ahead of yourselves here. Hang on. Wait. Hang on. You're getting ahead of yourselves here. One thing at a time. And you aren't? I'm trying to make sure no one tries to cut your head off, Vari. I already told you that coming in here was not a smart idea, and yet you did not listen. Now we must simply deal with the consequences. Listen, I'm used to keeping my whole deal up here under wraps. And with the whole deal going on with the, uh... Everyone wearing their hoods and their masks and such... I should be able to go about my things without raising too much suspicion, hopefully. You should be fine. Okay, so maybe those consequences weren't as bad as you figured they would be, Hellwight. <sighs> You're so uptight about what I do. What's up with that? Why aren't you just worrying about your own deal? I'm tired of you butting your head into mine, and that's what the problem is. If I could ask you to leave without you simply getting overwhelmingly angry about it, I would. I wanted to come in here alone. And? Why do you think and? I'm here to... Why do you think I'm here purely on ye... Because of your... No matter goals. what I say, you continue to attach yourself to me. Despite like- causing problem after problem after... Now, like, listen. I've got my own things that I'm then do them. currently pursuing. Yes, I am trying to. Thank you, Erevan. Pardon me, Isis. Do you mind if we could discuss a matter in private? Sure. I'm getting rather sick of being talked over. I have a room if you'd like to be alone. That'll work. Let's do you to a building that kind of seems before you go. Is, the, is there any way that you yeah. could direct us in our pursuit of more benefactory things? You know, what do you mean by benefactory? 
we want to help out. Or at least I want to help out. I can't speak with the others, but... I will come back eventually in, say, an hour. I have something I must attend to, but we can talk about it then. Sure. And how light, I'd be happy to allow you to have your time alone. Do whatever you need. Okay? <laughs> Just don't get good in your head up cut off by some random person. You really do not make yourself likable, Valerie. I mean, yeah. About how old does Asus look, by the way? Do I have, like, any defining traits? Maybe 16. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Maybe. She seems young. <laughs> but she's also- she- you can- you- it, looking at her, uh, there are two little, like, bumps in her hut. You can tell she's an elf. Okay, okay. So she looks about 16. Ah, for an elf. Okay, okay. For an elf. Which is still, like, young, but probably not about small my number age, of years. Got it. She looks about our Erevan's age, yeah. About 40. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, which is immature for an elf still, right? Yeah. They're, like, and mentality she matures she clearly too. Scale screams it. Yeah, she just seems like she was shoved into a point of place of uh like authority i'm really, really sick of this <laughs> yeah. I that's the word i was looking for um yeah so like once we get to this building yeah she would have led the whole group there and then you could have just followed her inside and she has there are several rooms it mostly seems like a place for like a town hall meeting or like mm -hmm. kind of democratic things uh, and she just kind of leads leads you off to a side room. What can what are why are you here? Well, I wanted to start by apologizing for being a problem for you. See that things here You're are not, not a easy. problem. And maybe apologizing on behalf of my compatriots then. Um, I would like to extend an offer that uh, I myself am willing to do anything to help your people deal with this infection. I do not know what I can offer, outside of what you already have. Travelers lend hands to travelers, it is just simply the way of things. Um, I was told by a man in Saith that on the matter of transformative magic and transcending the bonds of flesh, that one may be able to seek answers here. Since a young age, I have been plagued with... I suppose calling it an identity crisis would be... apt? Essentially... great uneasiness. I found myself drawn towards... different feelings and aspirations that... a normal person would not find themselves in, and... as of recently, I have found that one might refer to me as a... Genasi. I mean, yeah, I can tell that just by looking at you. You know of them? We have several. You have several? Yeah. Several of our people here are air genasi. We've had a couple water genasi here and there, but we mostly actually send those ones off to our sister tribe on the west coast. People in Saith and Limstead. Saw them as a fairy tale, a myth. Perhaps. Yes, because think about it like this: where disaster strikes, the Genasi lay. So wherever a natural disaster is likely to happen, you find more Genasi if they're being born there. We live in a plains land where we are no stranger to the tornadoes and storms that plague all up and down Keldara. But we are more likely to have our Air Genasi children grow up and be born here. Every once in a while, a deluge will come through, and with that, we may have a Water Genasi child. But those are more common the closer you get to the coasts. Same goes for Fire Genasi, where you, where you find people lay building cities at the feet of volcanoes 
you find fire genasi or places where wildfires are common. Mm. Genasi are attracted to disaster since they're created in it. You said you were a blood hunter? Yes. Let me guess, you live in the tops and tops of mountains, born on a particularly bad storm. The wind brought you there. The wind speaks plenty of truth. And it will take you where you want to go. All my life I have followed the wind. I suppose you're right. Um, do you follow the wind? Or do you listen to it? Following it is easy. Go place to place without thinking much of it. But if you listen, you'll hear the song. Wherever the song leads you, my mother used to say that's where you belong. Do you think I've heard the song once, then? Maybe more than once. Are there air genasi here right now? I... Uh, yes, I think so. I mean, unless they've gone out and, you know, scavenging, searching for berries and things. Would it be too much trouble if I were to be able to speak with one of them? I can arrange that, sure. Mm. Thank you. Believe it or not, I... What you have said so far is more than I've learned anywhere else in this continent. It may sound normal to you, but... Getting any information is... Difficult. We have particularly separated ourselves from the nonsense of the kingdoms, as those kingdoms have risen. There is a lot more lack of information in the surrounding cities I've found. Bigotry replacing philanthropy. Just... Madness replacing learnedness. At first I thought it was just simply how city folk were. Traveling so much has made me realize that the land one comes from is a greater role in defining who one is than practically anything else. You said you were an alchemist. Yes. I know it comes with the Bloodhunter territory, but I have to ask. Um... I would not mind working with you and your group a little bit, if you would help us figure out a way to cleanse our apiary. See what I can do. Anything. If you also would just like to leave and continue on your quest, you owe us no burden. We are strong people and we will survive. You can see that. Strength is written across your face. I... I believe that's the boredom. My mother was strong. She was never bored. Always happy to help and use her strength for others. I find myself bored because of the panic. All I've known over the last month or so is panic. And it has numbed me. Maybe what you oh, need no, is a... boredom is not strength. New breeze to come blowing into town. I myself do not. Boredom, if it were a state, is not one I experience. Nor is excitement occur. Any of these commonly experienced emotions. Although I do think that, in a way, can feel admiration, can feel joy, 
A little bit. Might have something to do with listening to the wind. If it would do your people well, I could arrange for contact to be made with the Northern Bloodhunter tribes. Kill an exchange of information could benefit in eradicating this infection. Mentor Alice knew more about blood ritual than I. As I am but a novice still. I do have a question for you. I would not mind that, I should say. I should answer your oh, yes. request. I'm not officially leader of the Aether Bound. I'm merely a temporary. Until someone can complete the trial. Temporary leader is still a leader? It is, but... I may not make lasting changes. I do have a question for you. What? I'm just looking at you. Why are you so pale? My skin? Yes, I've never seen... Is that not normal of an air genasi? No. I've never seen a blue one less than that. All of our Air Genasi people are white or grey or some variation upon the color of the clouds. Very rarely do we see blue. And much less. Your eyes. I blink. It's almost like. Almost like. Something happened to your eyes. I'm assuming no, since you can clearly see me, but I've never seen this kind of coloration on any air genasi. Mm. And, uh, I was thinking the riddles would cease. Um, as far as I'm aware, nothing has happened to my eyes. And these are simply how they've always been. I wasn't exactly normal in the place I came from either, but bloodhunters are a varied group. Skin color, eye color, hair, ears, fangs, tusks, height, none of it is consistent amongst their tribes. Except anyone and everyone. So, for a time I was told that it was just simply normal. Until I found out that my normal was still strange. Oh. I find you interesting. Hmm. Well, I'm glad to be of interest. Let's, uh, find your friends and... See what you can do to help. Yes. If that's what you want. Thank you. You're welcome. Did anyone stop while I was performing, Cat? A couple people did. Okay. Well, then I can try and gather information from people, you know, out there while I'm... They kind of mostly just kind of slow their walking as they walk by. Nobody su stops super long. Fair. How many children are like around or people that seem young? You probably see like two or three kids and you can tell they're kids by how they're chasing each other. Uh, but then you also see like that might be a halfling, that might be a gnome. <laughs> you see a couple because they're all like bundled robes and face masks <laughs> bee suits anyway <laughs> probably you see maybe a dozen people who could be qualified as younger probably based on how they're walking and how they are like holding themselves any of the people that like kind of slow i'd say then uh during their walks and they you know pass by or uh he'll take a moment and swap the uh 
major image so that it continues, you know, the music he was playing on the ocarina. So he could talk and just be like, uh, Hello, you there, um, a little respite for myself, hear the music and continue playing with the magic. Uh, what all can you tell me about what's going on here? Anything, uh, important I should know? Anything crazy you've noticed? One, one person stops. Nothing outside of the, uh, bees. Yeah, I'm new and big fucking little... bees. I'm new in town with all that. Um, could you explain more of that? What, when did that all start? Like, is there anything you Maybe noticed? Maybe uh, two months ago. Just uh, as we were changing into the autumn settlement and checking on the apiaries that we take care of during the autumn, things went awry and people started trying to, for lack of a better term, initiate the others into whatever happened, whatever poison is within bees. People were trying to initiate others into this. Initiate isn't the proper word for what I'm thinking, but it's the only word I can think of. Probably not indoctrinate. It, you know, but it's along those lines. Yeah. So it's like they're out of their minds in a way, or being... Yeah. Hmm. Controlled. Has anyone attempted uh, any form of, well, detection magic or... Capturing someone and seeing if we can, uh, we've detected it. We can, we've kind of gotten an idea on it, but it is not magical innately. Mm. That's all I really know, uh, but I must get going. I'm no, sorry. No, you're good. Thank you very much. I hope that the music helps add a little bit more to the monotony of the day. The guy smiles as he leaves. <laughs> well, I'm glad you feel like you're doing something out here, Uriet. God, when did you get out here? I've been watching you the whole time with the hood. So you never went with the others. Huh. I came back here, I guess, because, well, Howlite went off to work on figuring out her private situation. Also, I swear to God, I heard Erevan... Just now, I thought he was here. I must just be hearing things. I but, mean, uh, I kind of snuck off while you guys were in the building, and then how I went off on her. Yeah, to have a it's 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 kind of a it's a weird situation trying to keep track of where everyone is at once, isn't it? I mean, it's very difficult when a small man that you know can turn himself invisible and just walk away without anyone noticing. Hmm. So, here's my proposition. How about we actually go assess the situation ourselves instead of trying to get gossip from people just trying to go about their business, get from one place to another? How like that is a horrible idea at the moment. How like, why did I say how like? God, Where? sorry, I was on how like brain because I was thinking about her for the moment. You Vari! on the how like. Vari, that is a horrible idea. You see, we don't know if these creatures can see... Things that are invisible see through illusions easily without, you know, any sort of effort. We don't know what they can do. Besides that, if you get stung, there's a possibility you might be, for lack of a better term, manipulated, brainwashed, etc. I have protection from evil and good, if it's anything like... Listen, have you noticed that this is feeling very... Similar, do you have the sort of, like, deja vu feeling that I'm getting here? You mean, like, with a weird orb situation? I don't know, like a swarm of creatures beset upon a town involving mind control. It seems familiar. Yeah, so you're saying, like, it's like the orb? Yes, and what I'm wondering is, that fellow who came up to you talked about them prepping the fall settlement. I'm wondering if these apiaries, maybe they're a permanent feature here that they come back to every once in a while. Actually, wait. No, this just made me think of something. They, that person said that they were swapping them out about two months ago. Mm -hmm. Who swapped them out? If it happened around that time, then maybe asking the people. They didn't swap the apiaries out. They swapped locations. Yeah, locations. <laughs> 
Right. So I want to go at least maybe take a look at them, ask around, maybe ask around somewhere that's not in the middle of the street. <laughs> where'd you Where'd you learn to Where'd you learn to gossip? Oh, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry. I literally used to be able to walk into a town, my town, and I would just hear the gossip. So I mean, you know. I mean that's different, but it seems like. It seems like here, you're going to have people who are running all over the damn place because there's currently a quarantine and there's... Yeah, but there's still people... About. Yeah, but there's still people walking around and... Yeah, but like, they've got considerably less time. If we want the real gossip, we gotta go find where they de-stress. Gotta find, like, a tavern, something like that, you know? Eh. If anything, I was pondering going and finding that Asus girl and... Maybe just shadowing her for a little bit. If she's the uh, leader of this place and whatnot, maybe I can give her a bit of insight or something from my point of view, since I used to do this for a living, you know? Never had to deal with a quarantine like this, but might be able to help ease her burden a little. Ah, better than, you know, just sitting around not doing anything. Yeah, that's why I was playing music. I didn't even get the chance to introduce myself to her before I let dragged her off. I mean... Eh. Sure. Maybe, but I'll I'll try sticking around the others. I think being seen out on my own isn't exactly a good look. Yeah, yeah, no, you're kind of um <clears throat> sneaking around. Maybe people will think I'm up to no good. I've been, you know, I'm used to being profiled, so yeah, it's not going to offend me, but it's probably going to cause some issues for the rest of you all. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just glad that they're profiling you right now and not me. Oh, you're just a little guy. So, there's not much there to profile. Just a little guy with an instrument. Alright, what do you say we go meet up? With... Wherever the hell the others ended up. Let's go. Uh, they might be back where we left them, or not. Who knows? Uh... Yeah. And with everyone wearing the same exact damn robes. Not everyone, I mean, if you How remember. the hell are we gonna pick them out of the crowd? I mean, man, how we're I... gonna get so hopelessly lost here, man. Well, I mean, how I, the kid, and you are all kind of like in your normal attire with a little bit of extra added on. Uh, Erevan's super easy to find because, you know, clang, clang, clang. He's one of the only people I've heard so far in that heavy clanginess underneath robes. Celsius! I mean, Celsius he is himself. weird. He just he just kind of blends in with the background. I don't know how he does it. I mean, for him, it's kind of easy to see which one's him. The way he carries himself is different. He's got that virgin stride you gotta look out for. <laughs> I mean, like, if, well, so if you look at that, like, these people over there, that one's kind of like a, a bit of a different step to their gaunt and whatnot. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Step. I know what and you mean, man. Celsius would probably be walking hand, uh, probably right about here. Uh, another hand always ready to grab his <laughs> spell book if needed. You know. Plus, I mean, like, these people have a little bit of a curve. Slight lean forward. Celsius is too back perfectly straight. The prime angle. You use that guy as a protractor. Bro, what? Anyways, uh, it's, I don't even know how I know that term, but let's go back to the <laughs> others. How about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Squid said that I was on his radar. Do you have any idea what that is? Uh, it's an expression from what I've heard, and that means that somebody is... Fuck's a radar. <laughs> mm, I would assume it's probably similar to detect... <laughs> Object or whatever the heck that spell is called. <laughs> uh, what is it? Locate object? Locate object. It's probably similar to locate object or locate person. In a sense of uh, being able to pick out a person or a thing that you know of. And if you were on his uh, metaphorical radar or whatever the hell this thing is, which I assume might be. We're talking about an, omnip an omnipotent being. Eh. Uh, are you sure he's omnipotent? Uh, mm -hmm, yeah, because the best sticks with the best, and last time I checked, I'm the best. So, mm -hmm. you know. Sorry, are you 
confusing omnipotent with omniscient? Yeah, probably. Do you know what omnipotent means? I'm not means? good. No, but it's something Cross used a lot. Okay, so omnipotent effectively means that they are like all powerful. Right. And omniscient. And means what they I meant know to everything. That they're all all seeing. Yeah. You know, all surveying. That's more what I was going for. Okay, you caught me there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a bad habit of using words. I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> uh, anyway. That okay, was... I think this is where I left the others. I mean, I know where we uh, kind of, where I came from. Literally right over there. Uh, did I go the wrong way? Yeah, you went left when you should have went right. Damn it. It literally, that place over there, you can tell the difference by the slight difference in the tan of the walling. Uh, See, that one's yeah, like a nobody's going to pick up you on that. You were able to meet up with the rest of the thing. <laughs> no, no one literally is going to ever pick up on that. All these buildings look the damn same. I don't know how to say that one. <sighs> it's fine. It's fine. That tan's different from that tan. And... All right. Okay. I get it. The tans are different. Calm down now. Celsius! Celsius! Celsius, help. Tell her that the tans are different. Tell her that the tans are different. That what? tan is different from that tan. It's the lighting. There's no difference between the tans. They're just... One's at a different angle, so the shadow falls apart across it a little differently. They're literally identical. Which that, that tree over there, tans? that kind of like tannish color of that, is different from this tree right here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Celsius, is the dress blue and gold? Shut it's the fuck up. <laughs> the last dress that I saw was pink. Was it your mother's? No. I just wanted to say that, so. Fun. That wasn't. That was a legitimate <laughs> guess. By the way, I found out that. Uh... <laughs> People, God. don't get stung, by the way. Anyway, for the record, it looks uh, like the same time. Slightly different. It's different technically, but yeah, it sorry. is close enough. <laughs> sorry I'm not a mantis shrimp like you, apparently. What are we talking about bombastically over here? Big bugs, ocean bugs. I don't think it matters. You know, Does it ever matter with this? I don't know what that is either. Depends. Depends. Not Sometimes. Sure time, yeah. Yeah, give us 70% no, 25% yes. Anywho. I I'm going to be staying here until the problem surrounding the bees has been abided. Talked with Asus and found an agreement. You're more than welcome to continue on your way or stick around if you wish. I did offer that I would be putting my services up a novice alchemist and a blood hunter on the table. Huh. All right, let me ask you something real quick. Yes? Have you noticed that what's going on around here is giving off kind of a similar vibe as to what was happening back in Lemstead? Just like right off the bat, it feels like there's lots of similarities between the swarming creatures, the Involvement of mind control, the disease. Yes, I did notice that. I was worried about something, which, you know, that's, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's common, that's average for me, being worried about things all the time. Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm crazy. But, but. <laughs> I like to imagine she leans in at that, like, but. <laughs> this one may yes, actually be found. Because what I was wondering was. I overheard a fellow talking to Uriot earlier about the state of the apiaries, that apparently that these apiaries might be something that are more of a permanent fixture that they just return to every once in a while when they set up their camp for the fall. Are you suspecting sabotage? I'll tell you what I'm suspecting. What are the chances we go to those apiaries and find some ruins underneath them? <laughs> Um, Listen, I don't. I don't want to put. I don't want to manifest that by putting that idea out there. But the, maybe I've just been so, in Lemstead too long, and I'm, all, I'm automatically assuming all you issues might are like have Gilamore on the brain a little bit too much, Farrier. <laughs> yes, I, think I remember that talk we had about coincidences and fate earlier. 
We just simply rolled two ones on a six-sided bone pair. And those it's two weird. ones happen to be oddly similar coincidences. Things often come in pairs. I don't it's... want to assume that it's exactly the same until we have evidence to prove well, that it is exactly Lemstead the same. Well, with zombies, this is giant mutated bees, so... Right off the bat, no, things aren't exactly the same. Are they giants and mutated? I didn't hear that part. They might not be giant, they might just be regular sized. But they are mutated. I heard, just heard they were angry, aggressive, stinging people, and that sting is giving poison that does mind control or something it's like putting that. putting people into comas, it's not exactly good, but it's... I figured the not exactly would have zombies. figured out exactly what was going on earlier, because there's like spells to figure that out or something, they would know it. Well, how long has this been going on for? Do we know? Well, Probably respect since Aravan, set camp. The druids that would be able to solve the problem seem to have gone unconscious. I think they're doing all they can. The woman I came here to speak with is also unconscious. Unconscious or driven to insanity by this disease? Unconscious. Okay, so... From what I've gathered, people wake up from these stings no matter what. It's just mm -hmm. the time frame extends the more you're stung. It seems she was stung a lot. I've got very bad ideas going through my head right now. I, I'm not afraid to say it. I've got an idea going through my head, but I won't be able to test it until tomorrow. I can test mine immediately tonight. Ari, what is your idea? Um... You don't need to know. What you don't know won't hurt you, Halite. I think in this case it very much will. Well, I, I think in this case it very much more, might result in your death if it goes horribly for you, so you should probably listen, tell us so we listen, can stop Halite. you. Listen, weren't you, weren't you getting on my case about me being all up in your business and now here you are trying to get up in mine? Uh, I don't think I will. Business? Vari, in case you or... forgot, half the people here want you dead. Just based off of who you- based <sighs> off your appearance. Okay, how like you would know this, and only you, you and Rain would know this. Rain kind of would know this. I didn't quite explain the whole thing to her, but you know what I told you that one night while we were watching the storm clouds come in. Mm. Yes. I could probably do something similar to that, and maybe, just maybe, we can come in contact with the with the afflicted, and of the mm. afflicted, maybe even try, uh, Asus's mother. Because that if she is the like most powerful idea, one here, actually. she would probably know what to do if she's currently afflicted. I agree with your idea, Fari. I believe we should do that. Cool. You went in on it, then? Yes. Wonderful. Just wanted to can I get some clarification here. These insects, they're larger bees or wasps and whatnot. No confirm on that. They just tr sting people and mind control them somehow. They're probably also being mind controlled. I have no idea what's going on. Oh yeah, I mean, Celsus, you're welcome to join in as well. I know that you have an experience now that has Hellmite, but you are aware. Uh, and for those who don't know, basically I could do something which would allow me to commune with the unconscious. Alright. Sounds like a normal magic. Theoretically, yes. We could get at least into contact with Vega and figure out what happened to her. And maybe what she's experiencing right now? Yes. If we must take another stop, then yes, that sounds I'm like the best avenue. I'm gonna make a small message real quick. Maybe a friend has heard of something before similar to this, which might give us a mm. name or something to work with, even if it's small. Better than nothing, right. am I right? Sounds like a good idea, yes. Alright, give me a second. <clears throat> Strange insect, supposedly larger bee or wasp, unsure. Sting from them can cause coma or mind control of some capacity. Heard of anything similar? Thanks. Miss you. You didn't have to uh, include it. Stings of, you could have just said sting. He was trying to make a private call, Celsius. Why are you listing in on him like that? 
I wanted to use a library. Uh, you get a you get a you get a, a response like a moment back. It's his job. I haven't heard of this before. Can do research. Let you know tomorrow. Stay safe. Don't get stung. Hi. Uh, Emma says that she hasn't heard of anything uh, like this before, but. She can do some research and get back to me tomorrow. Cool. Well, if our method doesn't work, then we can have that to fall back on. <sighs> Puts me more at ease knowing that Ava can help in this situation. Oh. Kind of glad that I got that spell back, or... You get a message, you Oh, again. God! How long does problem last? What other symptoms do they experience? Thanks. Oh god, okay. Uh, do you remember? Near Swamp. Started two months ago. Stung more, lasts longer. Can affect animals. Compared the concept of it to fungal infection, cordyceps. We'll contact again soon. No, we'll, we'll contact again, sorry. Not as soon, because soon would be cut off. <laughs> Shall we head to the infirmary and try and learn a little bit more? Yeah, I think if we head there as a group. Erevan, if I'm next to you, I think... Well, <laughs> I think my presence would be a lot less eyebrow-raising if I was also with a paladin. So... Yeah. Pal what? There are some people here I Pal would need dork. to speak to, so... Would it be acceptable if I meet back up with you at the infirmary? Sure, you know what? Yeah, go. It seems like you need a little bit of you time. Go have a smoke break. And yeah, we can meet up later. I'm not that type of nomad. Not with that attitude. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you can get some, uh, if you find where people kind of gather to de-stress, maybe you can find some gossip. Maybe learn some more things that way as well. All that gives you a flat expression, and then just like after a second of like staring, just goes, It's probably a good idea. Hey, there we go. Okay, let's go get more information then, I guess. Okay, uh. It's probably for the best. Do you have words remaining, send my regards to Evelyn. Hey, if I, if I do. I will attempt to work it in. If you run into Asis, that's that's her name, right? I didn't yes. mess that up. Uh, tell her if she needs help, I'm willing to give my little bit of, you know, leadership mm. knowledge and whatnot. See if it won't help a little. I will do that. Uh, does anyone else wish for me to pass on uh, platitudes towards... Asus of your assistance. Maybe not to Asus, but if you can just confirm with like people around town, if there's anyone else here who enjoys eating bugs, come find me and we can eat <sighs> bugs together. Maybe you should go to the gossip circles, Fari. I think you'd fit right in. <laughs> yeah, I'd have a lot more fun there with, with you guys. <laughs> Why do I feel like you would just go and Not eating people, it. not eating bugs. Are you trying to insinuate that you have been inserting yourself into these scenarios? Do you wish to be the druggy nomad? <laughs> you know, well, maybe it is all right if you no, wish no, to no. do drugs. I won't judge you for it. Crack pipe, anyway. <laughs> My source? <laughs> Crack pipe. <laughs> I'll ask the nomads if they have something light for you to get started with. Well, you really got my back, don't you? Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna go make sure that no one's, like, dead or dying. Yeah, they will. No one do anything too stupid. <laughs> Sorry. I'm literally <laughs> traveling together, why? Yes. 